Hello. Hello. Hello, Carl. All right. You're all right. Going? Yeah. yeah, it's Good. going all right. Like Frank and Liza. This actress, Jessica Chastain, who is going to be huge in a year, I think everyone knows her name, and I was at the premiere last night for her film, and I said, oh, when you come in tomorrow, you'll meet Ricky Gervais, and she started screaming, going, oh, I saw her at Madden Square Garden, I've seen all the office and extras, and I said, oh, you'll also meet Carl, and she, she, if anything, she screamed even louder. Oh. She's just screaming all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got her on for? <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it might oh, be a condition. Yeah, she can't communicate through words, God. just through screams. We've got a something for it, though. She, if you take these lithium pills, she's all right for an hour, so don't worry about it. Well, look, Carl, you've got a following in America now. Think of that. You see, what, what a lovely compliment you just passed on there from uh, an actress who's come to this little island. She's going to be huge. She's nice, and and you did. Look at you. I wasn't this and I just your, said she's coming in screaming. Language. You know when you when you feel so when you go to a some sort of uh, zoo in a country that hasn't quite got their animal rights together, yeah. and that you see these old chimpanzees just sitting there rubbing their head, and they've got neuroses, and they're you know a bit think, emaciated. I know you? you feel so sorry for them, and you want to that like him now. That's just like him now, rubbing yeah. his head. That's comfort. That's what that's what all simians do to comfort themselves. They just touch their head. And that, like, oh, what am I doing here? So how's it going? It's Richard? going all right, Carl. <laughs> it's going all right, thank you. <laughs> he is right. It looks as though you've just been See? told you've got a week to live. Because I've been all over the place. Where, where? Where have you been? You name it, I've been. If you had a globe in here and you span it and popped your finger on it, I'll France. Go, yeah, I've been there. France. Well, not for the series, but I've been there. Yeah, well, um, your, your kitchen. Yeah, I've done that. But, no, I've been everywhere. I've been to Alaska. Uh, I've been to Thailand. I've been to Vanuatu. What's that? Exactly, that's what a lot of people say, they don't know where it is. I'd, I'd never heard of it. The globe that I've got, Vanuatu, isn't even on it. Yeah, but it's a blow-up one, isn't it? It's not, it's a proper one. It's a proper globe that I've got and I looked for it, cos I always, like, I, I was doing like, you know, like on Wacker Day when you used to put stickers on a globe. It's a cracking reference there. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who had a job in the 80s. Timmy Mallet, he had like a map, didn't he, and he'd say, hey. <laughs> I love the fact that your geographical knowledge up till now was based on Timmy Mallet's Wacker Day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I've been to there. I've been to New Zealand. I've been to Australia. I've been to Japan. Just got back from Japan about now, three days ago. Let's, let's explain what an idiot abroad is. So this is where Ricky, yourself and Stephen Merchant send him to places he doesn't really want to go to. Well, he does want to go to them because he, he, we drew up a list. Um, uh, I've got we a sort list. Of found, we sort of found the top hundred sort of... Uh, um, people's bucket list, things to do before they die. That's the list That's that I've like, uh, been, been passed the list now by Carl. Right, and they're the, they're the- before you die. They recur, they're the a hundred most popular things that we could- we could find, we compiled that, and we let him choose seven. Um, that's not to say there weren't little surprises along the way. Why do you pick hard ones? Like in the- in the first episode, you mm. go to a remote island on the other side of the planet. Look at the number 65 is Skinny Dip at Midnight. He, well, he doesn't go nude. I don't do nude. Oh, right, okay. Don't like doing nude. Would you be happy being nude? No, but you could you could knock that off, couldn't you, in ten minutes? Knock what off? <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that, uh, how he says nude. N-O-O-D. No, nude. I'm not happy with that. I know, like, I th would you go nude on the telly? No. I, I think there's I something wrong with people when they do that. I don't, I, I don't think, I'm not happy doing that around the house. Just walking around with out on. You can understand why an actor would have to do it for a part. I don't, I know, I don't actually. What about if the part... We know what's the there. What are they showing us? Why does that happen? It's not. It's not great acting. Taking your pants off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why they have no, to do it. But and it just makes it awkward no, when you're watching some, it with your mum and some, dad. No, but sometimes it is necessary because it would ruin the piece. Like what? Tell me a film where you've gone. I'm glad he got his tackle out. So, well, uh, um, no. But when you're showing something, uh, you know, could be some uh, a form of. Um, degradation or something. Someone going they into prison have... sometimes have an important scene where they're strip yeah. searched and they have to take their clothes off and that might be integral to the plot. So therefore, you have to see it. But see you just it all. do it. You do it. They did. Look, you've watched Jesus and Nazareth. Yeah. With Mary had a baby. I what? don't know what this is. How is this a, is this a Boney M song? What, what, what are you I'm talking about? What I'm saying to you is, what? you take things as as given. If someone's pregnant, you don't need to see it happening. Too much sex on the telly. No, so I agree, I agree. I think 95% of it is gratuitous. Right, and, and that's normal. what I just was but, saying. But, so, but we're not talking about, we're talking about um, when it can be justified. Sometimes it would be worse not to, you know, it'd be better not to, to, to have anything than have a pair of pants on something. What about if you're going to uh, stay with some 
tribe and mm. they will consider it enormous disrespect for you not to strip off then well that in, in happened didn't it that well, happened in this yeah. first episode well in context that would then be acceptable wouldn't it that would be the right thing to do because it would be disrespectful not to do it it's not gratuitous no it's, it's all about societal pressure as well we we, we you know we yeah but at the same time richard that happened and it's not about rick and steve didn't send me to that tribe to wear a thing called a nambas <laughs> they just wanted to see me Try to get out of me getting my tackle out. Yeah, I don't want to see his tackle. I like him struggling and feeling uncomfortable about the, um, you know, uh, the chances that he might get it. You know, I, I don't ever want to, I must say, I never want to see him nude. Can you explain a nambas? It's, it's like pants made of leaves. Yeah. Yeah. Or wicker. Or, uh, just you know, anything that's You know Dolmad is that Greek dish with sort of rice wrapped in a little vine leaf? Yeah. That's, we wanted his little it's rice ridiculous. wrapped in a little vine leaf. Yeah. I would have looked ridiculous. It, it, just, we're going to play a clip from the first episode in a moment. Just to come up, first of all, at the very beginning of the episode, Ricky, Carl doesn't quite understand the premise of 100 Things to Do Before You Die, because he says, no. he's like, why do I want to swim with dolphins if I've only got, you know, a, a few minutes, it, Yeah, right? he thought it was immediately before you die. Like, someone's really sick and ill on life support and you chuck them in a pond. All right, that's well, that's it's... saying then, that's saying live every day as if it's your last, yeah. like Ronan Keaton sang about. Yeah. I don't think I'd be up for doing much. If it was my last day, no, I'd stay in. No, no, again, the point well, of that phrase is that you don't know it's your last. So, because we don't know it's our last, every. But you moment, can't live like that either, because what do you do when you've got bills to pay and you go, oh, I've spent all that? I thought it was going to be the last day. It's well, a ridiculous thing to all, live by. But that's what? all part of it, isn't it? it pension, you get a pension. Yeah, I don't so, know how long I'm going to be around. Yeah. It doesn't mean go and get a credit card and live it up and hope you die tonight so you don't have to pay it back. It means every moment is precious. Our life is finite. So live every day like it's your last live every every moment savor every good meal every fine mm. wine every nice experience because it might be your last carl if it was your if it actually was your last day and you knew it was your last day what would you well, do well that's with, different what, what would you do with that's it that's very different i'd probably it, just um <sighs> god i'll be at the doctors <laughs> yeah well not if, you, <laughs> if there's no point no all right, I won't do that. What would you do? Just stay in. Just watch, watch a film, watch something. I, I'd hope it. I, I, I think I'd hope it was a miserable day. I wouldn't want it to be sunny. I've thought about that. If I was dying, yeah. I'd want it to be horrible and miserable outside. Mm. So I'm not going to miss it. Yeah, I'm like I'm not bothered. Really, really? not bothered. Probably eat something that's not that nice. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> that thing of your last supper thing when they do that on the, you know, on, yeah. on death row. Is yeah. there anything more depressing than that? Is there anything sadder and more depressing of someone choosing their last meal? I mean, yeah. it, I mean, let's not get into the humanity of it because it's pretty disgusting anyway. But the fact that they make sure you haven't got flu before they execute you. Well, the, the fact they use new uh, syringes. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. Use used ones. <laughs> Yeah. What does it matter? Yeah, good point. <laughs> that is a good point. Brilliant. <laughs> that is a good point. I don't suppose you have much of more an highbrow discussion on Five Live. <laughs> it is. I don't suppose you have much of an appetite for your last day anyway, or you're on death row. Let me just play a clip. But you, when you were on last time, because you'd done the first series, an idiot abroad, which was going to the Seven Wonders of the World, mm -hmm. and um, you were. I mean, you were so oh, adamant, oh. so adamant that you wouldn't do a second series. I don't know what I want to do at the moment. I but don't know. You're definitely ruling out doing another series of An Idiot Abroad. Yeah. No that's happened. way. No way. No, what about if it rates really well? It doesn't matter. Remember, I didn't know what it was going to be like. I thought it was going to be a bit more like a holiday. I now know what it's like. And if you do a second series or something, it's got to get madder, hasn't it? Look at Jack Bauer, 24. <laughs> it was believable at first, and it just starts getting mad. <laughs> it, was, it was not believable. Well, at first. more believable in series one than it was as it went on. That's why I don't want to do. What's wrong with just doing something once? <laughs> uh, right, Carl. What uh, happens? Well, I've got bills to pay. Haven't I? I've got bills to pay, so I've I, got it to do took something. Me, it took me six months, didn't it? Gentle persuasion. Every time we sort of went out for a drink or went for a meal. Well, it was meant to be the natural wonders. He was talking about. I'm going. I'm not doing it. And then they said, the bucket list idea. You can come up with what you want to do, and you know, I thought, well, I'm, I'm deciding. So I'll do it. Plus, I was in a programme called Idiot Abroad. Options aren't flying in work-wise, Richard, when, when you've got that on your CV. When the idiot in the, it refers to you, yeah. and you become known as an idiot. But mainly money, that's why does anyone do anything? Yeah, well, Attenborough messing about in the jungle at his age. He doesn't want to be in there, <laughs> neck eye in mud. <laughs> He's doing it because it's a job, isn't it? Mm. Why, why are you sat here? <laughs> well, that's not true, is it? Because he could do something else. So it has to be a passion as well. Uh, 
Um, you enjoy, you know. Mm, I don't know about that. I think most of us, you, you don't always, you can't always pick what you want to do. You do it because money. Oh, I but bet you, you're proud of the show, though, aren't you? But you are picking. I'm what happy you with do. it now. It's over. I think it looks brilliant. You said to me before. You said, "Oh, you watched the first episode. It looks amazing. It looks what, beautiful." What do you say to those people that that think you're whinging? You've been all around the world. You're getting well paid. You're you're on Sky. You you know people are interested in what you say. You, you've written books. You know. You were under the wing of Ricky Gervais. I mean, yeah. Well, that's why it's happened. You made it happen. <laughs> yeah. But what do you say to those people that think you're whinging and that, that you should well, be grateful? No, shut up. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't know, do they? They don't know what it's like. Everyone just sees this forty-five minutes of telly. They don't know what I've been through, where I've stayed. I'm not even moaning about it anymore. It's just because people don't listen. Ricky, do you remember a couple of times ago when you were in and, and we rang Carl and he was at home and he was you were grouting, I think. I was grouting. You yeah. were grouting. Yeah. How did that go? It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Broke the vac doing it. How do you, what do you mean? Because when you're grouting, it all comes out. I had a, I had a, what's it in a Dremel, that's what I told you yeah, about. Yeah, Dremel, yeah. And it was going everywhere, dust, so I used mm. Henry the Vac at the same time mm. to oh, sort of I catch see. the dust. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blew it up. Yeah. Blew Did up you? a Vac. Yeah. You got a new Vac? Yeah, I bought a Hetty. Is it a Hetty? I have no idea. A pink one. Other is this isn't actually going out, is it? Is. it? <laughs> I think it might We're going to edit this bit out, aren't we, to make it a little bit tighter and yeah. more exciting? <laughs> well, we will do with the podcast. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Carl, uh, my point was this. When I spoke to you on the phone, you said that you hadn't seen any money from Series 1, and you said, Ricky keeps talking about this pot of money. Where's the pot? So I haven't right. seen it, obviously. Have you, have you <laughs> Honest to God. Unless you know, I, I haven't seen the pot. And that's part of why it is I don't want to go, but this is like talking about some sort of pension plan. Look, the point is that when you uh, own the format, it's back end, which which means that they see where the profit is, the whole show, the sales abroad, and that takes, we're just, it's only just, the, the office, the American office, has only just started showing the syndication rights. It's worth waiting for, Carl, but it's going to be a while. And you, you've got money to go along. I don't know where you spend your money. I know, last time he said, oh, this is unbelievable, we were out to dinner, um, me and Jane without with him and Suzanne, and he was talking about Christmas, and he's moaning about money as well. And I know how much he's got. And <laughs> uh, and um, he was going, "Well, she's had a flaw. She's had a flaw. He got a flaw in the kitchen, and he was trying to make it that his girlfriend's Christmas present that she'd had a flaw. It's Unbelievable! The, and it's the floor she wanted. I know, yes, but, but you walk on it. You, you, she's not the only one that uses the floor. It's not what you have to. You don't. You don't have to jump to the cooker. She doesn't it's her know floor. what she wants. <laughs> she's had a floor. She's fine. Brilliant. She's well, spoiled rotten. Everyone feels sorry for her. You know, she's she she has got it good. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> she gets what she wants. She's already talking about Christmas presents, and I say, to, I sit down and go, right, what is it? That she you keeps want? saying, yeah. Carl, don't forget this year. No, because I just want to know how much she wants something. Yeah. Right. She sits down and go, what do you want? And she'll yeah. say, and I'll go, right, why do you want that? Okay, and let me I'll quiz her on it. Let me talk about two Christmas presents that I know of. Just two Christmas presents. Yeah. One, he gave her the camera that he got uh, a leaving do, still wrapped up. Said, so, there you go. You wanted a camera. Oh, that's uh, one. Did I say, I had it really, just hand it straight over to Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. right. Why does that matter? I can top that. Something else you don't know about. Sky, after the last series, mm. gave me an iPad. Right. She got that for Christmas. <laughs> but you're saying it like you're proud of this. I'm not proud, I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with it, because she wanted one Did of them. Did you tell her that it was a second-hand gift? Did uh, you take the Sky logo off the wrapping paper? No, I don't think I did, but it's what she wanted, so it doesn't matter where it's come from. I think the, I think the, the one she's um, most pleased with was the, uh, the uh, bumper family pack of condoms, two for one offer. You got it from Boots that year. Right. There you go. Did that actually happen? Got used. Let's take the travel. Ricky <laughs> Gervais <laughs> 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 and Carl. Not with me. <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. Oh. I'm joking. Twenty past two. Oh. Louise Pepper. Barry, oh. dig us out. Go on. The West him. Midlands. Uh, the M6 is in a mess as well. Uh, an earlier accident northbound between Walsall <laughs> Junction 10 and the M54 at 10. Face and Carl Pilkington are here at the moment. We'll talk about life's too short a bit later, Ricky. Sure. Carl's got to go at half past. Um, and uh, what, are you going out to do some? Was it like your boiler broken? No, no, just things to do. Okay. We don't like sitting around out staying me welcome. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't be. Um, but we'll talk about life's too short. Carl, what do you say to those people <laughs> who say that um, it's all planned and scripted? An idiot abroad. That what? What do you say uh, to those people? You've, you've spoken to the people that say that you're whinger. You said, shut up. What do you say to the people that think that... I'm not bothered anymore. I'm not bothered. 
Uh, a lot of people do think that. A lot yeah, of people think that what you do is an act. Yeah. Yeah. Forget it. <laughs> whatever, whatever they want to think. Because what can you do when people are like that? <laughs> One, I don't understand why they think it is sort of a scripted thing. I don't know why they think I'm an idiot. That's the first one, because I'm not an idiot. You wouldn't say that, would you? No, you're not. Of course you're not an idiot. Right. So we can agree on that. You say, you, you say, you say funny things because you have a different outlook on the world. Uh, Carl's one of the smartest people I know. He's not the most educated, right. and so he's got gaps in his, his knowledge, and that's what's funny. He's also very opinionated, and he's different, right? But there's no way he's, he's honestly one of the sharpest people I know. And also, we put him in that situation to get the best out of him. I know exactly how to get this funny Carl out. He's not out all the time. When we go out for a drink, I'm not, I'm not making him do stuff. Well, I'm not, I'm not, wow, well, so. What so, were you doing the other night? Tying a napkin around my head. <laughs> <laughs> that was an experiment. Yeah. That mm. was an experiment because I wanted to show him the tourniquet. How uh, yeah, if you yeah. put, tie it and then put a, a, a simple lever in it and turn it, you can get so much pressure. And it, you nearly burst, didn't you? Yeah, Your head nearly yeah, burst. Yeah. So and you learned something. It's like it's sort of like Blue Peter. I don't want to bring up Blue Peter again. <laughs> <laughs> those days are gone. No, they're a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no. yeah. Um, too soon for those jokes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, I feel that um, it, it's I, I love this 10 year experience I've had with sort of educating Carl, Is not in a patronising way. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. He's also, he's also my best mate. I can't get enough of him. We are mates. We do this. And he knows, he knows why I do this and it, it but it doesn't mean he doesn't still get angry and annoyed when he's stitched up somewhere, mm. um, on a shelf on, uh, on a trans Siberian railway and thought it was in first class and, um, I changed the ticket to third <laughs> at the last minute, you know. So there's still fun things, but you do it like mates do it. You do it like mates do it. I, I, I think some of the things you say are really wise sometimes. But then I you do- I agree, I agree. Uh, but at the same time, some of the stories you tell do seem fanciful, so- I, He's I, having a go now. Mm. No, I'm not, I'm not having a go. Mm. I'm, not having a, I'm not saying they're not true, it's just that they seem- uh, yeah, implausible. But they, I, mean, I, I don't think you're. A, I don't think you're a liar. I don't think you even have the capacity to lie. But it, it, there's that story. This might be from your old XFM podcast. Where did a mate of yours or a neighbour keep a horse in the house? Look, what? Y yeah, but what? So hang on, I've just got back from Africa, where someone's got a hippo in the house. <laughs> Do you don't believe me? What, what, what do you want? <laughs> what can I do? It's not my house, it wasn't my horse. I'm just telling you. Where did you, where was this? In Manchester? Yeah. Yeah, on the estate. Someone that kept a horse in the house. Horse in the it? house and, but you know, they didn't, they didn't have much. They didn't have that much money. They couldn't afford a stable. So it's in the house. <laughs> did they have kids, of... kids on estates get spoiled sometimes more than people with money. Mm. So they'd spoiled the kid and got it a horse, but nowhere to keep it. Exactly. So it was in the house. No uh, carpet in the house. Massive telly. They always have big tellies, don't they, in these houses when they got now. The horse like Coronation Street. <laughs> it was just that one wandering around. I went round because I was flogging um Dead horse. plants in pots. Right, yeah. Raising money for uh me. <laughs> and there was a horse in the lounge. Was it sitting on the couch? It was just wandering around. Did it go? Hello, can I help you? But that isn't that unbelievable, Richard. I mean, it, no, it's weird. It, it is strange. It is weird. Yeah, but then this weird thing, you know, that there are weird things, things. on estates, you know. And right. also, people have uh, heard the podcast, which is, you know, like 40 hours of Carl talking about his childhood, but he's got, you know, 35 years to tell. I mean, if it happened every day, those weird yeah. things, but, you know, they're sort of condensed and, uh, and we've sent him to places where there are these strange customs to us. Um, uh, and there's no better man to do it. Could I just say in defence of Idiot Abroad as well? Yeah. Um, it's not a comedy show. Uh, yeah, I uh, it, it's planned, um, behind Carl's back, but everything Carl says is the first thing that he thinks. It's not, it's, there's no filter with Carl, and I think it's a really interesting, and dare I say it, quite important documentary. It's, it's beautifully made. It's re I think in terms of, uh, comparing the first to the second series, I think it's, it's moved up, hasn't it? Good, isn't it? it? It's, yeah, some of the photography is as good as your, you know, your Attenborough shows, I think. Yeah, definitely. You look as though you're enjoying it more than the first series. I've only seen one episode so well, far. Well, it's over now, isn't it? And I've done it, I've been everywhere, it can't be any more, so now I can enjoy it. It's, what have I got to worry but about? But you had some good times on screen this time, didn't you? Yeah, I, I sort of, um, I don't know, I think I tried to enjoy it more. Last time I moaned a lot and I was trying to get out of it and try to come home. This time I was like, I know this is how it's going to be, stop moaning, get on with it. 
Le and I, I try to, yeah, I try to enjoy my moments. Let's play a clip here. You don't enjoy this bit. This is you from episode one of An Idiot Abroad, uh, series two, when you attempt, or nearly attempt, a bungee jump. We could have gone straight to the desert island, but instead we've come all the way here for a pointless occasion, because it's not going to happen. <sighs> I said I'm not bungee jumping. When we talked about the whole bucket list thing and Steve was going, oh yeah, bungee jumping, that's, that's what people want to do. They might, but I don't. And this is meant to be my bucket list. I've been on the world now for 38 years. I don't need to introduce this now. Oh, I'm just creating a new problem if I do get into bungee jumping. I don't want to change. I don't want to get into this. Can't let it go. Look up. Bring that chin up. Focus on that mountain. Nah, forget yes. it. Yes. No. And you're going to die there. No, I don't want yeah. it. Come on. No. Honestly. So what was that noise? I just made a noise I've never heard come from me. Yeah. Uh, there's that noise again. No. Yes, you are. No. You have got it, mate. No. Yours. Looking up. Forget it. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. No, this is cute. I don't want to do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't want to do it. For, for anyone watching online on our cameras, which are at bbc.co.uk forward slash five live, you didn't appear to uh, enjoy reliving that. No, it took me right back. Mm. It's weird. It looks weird. good on radio, doesn't it? All that HD. Looks wonderful, the scenery. <laughs> yeah, you radio. were just saying how good it looked. I yeah. Know, <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> here's a mank bloke talking. Oh, here he is again. Mm. Just the same. This looks just as good. <laughs> no, but that's just a small bit of it. I mean, I, I it, quite like the, uh, you know, meeting people and stuff around the world is quite good. Because we just... It's any experiences that he's had that you were jealous of, that you've looked back and think, I'd, I'd like to do that or I wish I'd done that? Um, well, most of them, really, as long as I didn't have to stay in the same rooms as w that I put him in. Um, but yeah, uh, um, there's some things I agree with him, you know. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I do agree with most of the things he says that, um, but, um, uh, I would, uh, I'd love the wildlife experience. Yeah, I'd love to do that one day. He came face to face with a mountain gorilla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, the, the guy out there with him said, Carl, you know, I think we wanted an Attenborough moment, we wanted him to say something profound. And, uh, Carl came up with, they've got little ears. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? No, it's, have you ever had to do any presenting like that when you've got to sell a, an important moment? Probably. You did Obama coming to yeah, charge, didn't Yeah, you? I did, yeah. Just imagine if you'd have been the first bloke out on the, on the moon. They'd, they'd written you a little thing. But he had loads of time, didn't he? Armstrong, what would you have said? A rocket what would you have said? Okay, you've just done it. You've just stepped out on the moon. What's the first thing? It's, no. No, but what I'm saying to you is, he was sat in that rocket doing nothing for ages. Right. He was doing a crossword or something, I read. They really? came up with a pen that works in space or something, didn't they? Yeah, I thought- He I, was I, doing I, all that. Apparently. A pencil. Well, no, exactly, no, Russia yeah. Russia did that. Russia yeah. did the pencil. That's right, America spent about hundred grand on getting a pen that worked in space and Russia took a pencil. Whereas when I was sort of trekking for the gorillas, I walked for about eight hours, and the guide kept saying, ten minutes, ten minutes, all right, fifteen minutes, well hang on a minute, how long are we walking here? And it went on for eight hours, and then I get there- That's because you were going too slow, so the gorilla was getting away. If you'd have gone faster, you'd have got caught up with him. So I get there, and the bloke with the camera's going, right, quick, say something, look at the camera, say something, this is the moment, you know, it's gonna keep moving. So even though I was there, I couldn't enjoy the moment. They're all looking at the gorilla behind me. I've got to come up with something looking at a camera about this special moment. And it wasn't a special moment. My feet were wet. I ate wet socks. But where is Neil Armstrong at ages in the rocket? I didn't- You had eight hours. No, yeah. because it's tricky, Richard. It and was after, up and down. After, you'd, after you'd pointed out they got little ears, what was your profound statement? Do you remember? <sighs> I think I'd, I think I said I say it best when I say nothing at all. So yeah. just film that. He quoted Ronan Keating. <laughs> I don't, but he quoted Ronan Keating because after meeting a silverback mountain gorilla. Right, what would you have said world? then? Come on, what would you have said? That hasn't been said already. I'd have said, life, did it I'd have said life is a roller coaster. <laughs> 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 Carl, you know how to say you're welcome. Do you want to say just like five more minutes? Ten after minutes. Yeah. Okay, right. great. Ten more minutes. Carl Wilkins is here. <laughs> eight five. Put your own questions to Carl. Eight five zero oh, five eight. It's uh, two thirty two. Here's Justine Green. What is the, thank you very much, Bob. Bob. But Carl, you look like you're in constant pain. No, I'm just. Um, I'm, I am still jet lagged. Are you okay? There's a text here that Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington are here. And when is an idiot abroad two on? When did it start, Ricky? Friday. It starts on Friday. It's it's on nine o'clock. And it's there's tricky, a book out from series one. Yeah, that's still number one. one. It's doing all right. That mental. 
I mean, it's a, I told him that. I, I, I told him the sales, the DVD, the DVD. I mean, the book and the DVD was sold about a million, right? Nothing, nothing. I tell him that these people that, you know, like you, these people that I talk to at the Golden Globes and these award shows, they're not impressed with it. The only thing he's impressed with It's being is, paid. That is all no. I want, Richard. That is all I do this for. <laughs> like, anything No, else. no, there's- That is the one no. thing. I love it when I get a cheque in the post. Yeah. You're never there yeah. to witness no, that. No, you don't. You moan about it, cos you say, oh, I've got to pay tax and that, I've got to do this, that, guy. Yeah, well, yeah. everyone else sticks yeah. their hand out, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> he, 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 Oh. But that is why. But the one thing we, we um, I'm just working on um, the third series, the Ricky Gervais show, the animation. Yeah, and we're just finishing it, and I showed him the finished first episode, and he loves that. He watches those over and over again. He lo he loves watching himself as a cartoon. Why? Because it's not him. It's and not I like him. It's yeah. like they've added to it, and it's and things I we said. It, you can watch it like it's not. I watch it like it's not us three. Well, I forgot a lot of things we talked about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and they and and they've got better and better. The third series is better than the first two, and it got better and better. But um, I I, I really love those. I think it's a lovely little little gem, isn't it? Carl, yeah. how do you feel? How do you feel about getting recognised? The, the the fame aspect of it. Do you like that? No, not really. Why not? Um, I th because I'm not uh, I'm not that sort of person, really. I just like keeping myself to myself. Does I'm it happen a lot now? Yeah, not, not, I mean, I don't go out, I don't put myself in situations where there's loads and loads of people. I wouldn't go to, say, a Glastonbury or something like that, just because I don't want to come across I, miserable. No, I, I never, never really cared for it. I mean, I, I knew going into it that if, you know, you became a successful actor or comedian, you'd, be, you'd become a famous one, but I was always wary. I didn't want people to think I'd signed with the devil, you know, make me famous and you can go through my bins. I never signed no. that contract. And it's, you've got to be careful what you say as well, because people think you're ungrateful. It's like, I, I did an interview recently and they said about, oh, do people bother you? And I went, no, everyone's really nice. I said, I have to avoid pubs. Um, sometimes a drunk would come and say, oh, have a drink with us, and you have to go, oh, I'd rather not, and they think, oh, you've changed. And I go, no, no, I haven't. I never used to drink with strangers. But the headline was, I'm too famous for pubs. I saw that. So- It said it, you hadn't been in a single pub in ten years or Well, something, it, it, it makes me look like I'm complaining, or I, I've started the conversation. Like, I've gone into a room for the journalist and said, listen up. <laughs> but I'm too famous for pubs. <laughs> I love pubs. It's like, but there, and Carl's very aware of this. People, there are some, and there are a small percentage that are out to twist your words yeah. and make you look like you've changed. They build you up and you want to bet. And I think Carl's very aware of that. And and he hasn't. He hasn't changed a bit. In fact, he's got slightly more Carl. The more I've known him, the, you know, um, so, uh... I, I like, you know, it's great if people come up and they just go, oh, I like your programme, I go, cheers, and they wander off. Mm. What else do they say? It, no, it's just the freakier ones where they want to know everything or they know everything. It's like, Where they know, know the podcast even better than you do. Yeah, well, I, don't, I don't like yeah. that. Yeah, well, like but it's it. the ones that think they know everything and don't. I mean, the problem is that everyone's, uh, you know, I've got a blog. Everyone's a journalist these days. Everyone's a critic. So, um, you, th th there's these conspiracy theories. I mean, people say things that they really think they know. I've heard that, that uh, I know for a fact that, you know, they do. Carl's an actor called Graham. <laughs> that, you know, they, 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 it's, it's, you know, they work out how rich you are. And, uh, and it's like, you know, but fans <laughs> are fine. We, we, we couldn't do without fans. We, we like people that like what we like and they buy away. Of course we do, you know. But um, I, I think you do have to draw the line of privacy because, um, because I, I think it's your right. This you know? phenomenon of people making uninformed comments online is remarkable now. If you go on, one of my f uh, favourite pastimes, I might not be the right phrase, but a pastime is going on the mail online picking an innocuous story about a celebrity and looking at the Seeing comments. The hatred. That it's I love comments. I've done a few essays for uh, the Wall Street Journal and, you know, they're probably contentious issues because some of them I, I suppose you'd count as controversial, particularly in across middle America, that I, I talk about, you know, science and atheism and those, and the comments are incredible. I mean, just... What sort of things? Oh, just brain-dead, ill-informed Ill people like, the devil's gonna kill me tonight. And you wanna, you wanna laugh because you wanna go, I don't know where to start with that. <laughs> you haven't read the essay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not scared of the devil because I don't think he exists. <laughs> and th then, then you go to the real hatred of the people that think, you know, um, uh, abortion is wrong, even if it's the product of a paternal rape, and you want to go, I don't know where to start. Mm. 
I don't know where to start with this, so you have to sort of like uh, walk away. It's good with the with the mail because there's a bloke who's writing for that who said that I'm not an idiot, so it's great. Carry yeah. on. Frank right. Sarah. An a, 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 what's he said? I've got a, a, an MA. He said oh, you'll probably find out that Carl Pilkington has got an MA in classics. That's brilliant. Did he? But, That's great. But again, he, carry he, on. He reared his head again. He, I think he reviewed the first series before anything had been made. I mean, I think because he's a travel journalist. I think the uh, the more reactionary um, uh, travel writers think that oh, who is this oik? That's no, come along. Just Didn't you send the tape to Alan Wicker? Um, we did. We wanted to get a review, um, but um, he was very, very nice and said good luck. Um, he said, "I don't feel I can um, endorse this as it's put back <laughs> Indian-British relations by 100 years." <laughs> 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 what did he say about India, Carl? I didn't say anything bad. It was just he the said time. It was the worst I... place on earth. <laughs> yeah, but do you know what? Even though I said that, I'll <laughs> What's never your forget it. Definition of bad. <laughs> I'll never forget it. And is it better to have a really bad experience somewhere than one where you go? I can't... Do you know? Like I've been to a lot of Gran Canaria. I couldn't tell you which is what. <laughs> Whereas with India, I know I was there. There's still bits of me there. It's it's a tough place. If you can handle that, it's a proper test of your character. Mm. Mm. And I. I I've got good memories of it in a way. It's an but amazing. Then what do you think of the people that live there? So you must think great. That they were, yeah. yeah, people were were great. Nothing but wrong with them. People, Carl never has a go at the people or their plight or their. He says what he thinks about a situation. I mean, mm. I, I think him in the the Middle East was incredible. I mean, oh. he said some amazing stuff that isn't. They don't show that side of it. They don't show. Uh, Carl was depressed about the war, you know, and um. Uh, it, it really moved him. I had a conversation with Carl. I was on the phone for about half an hour, and he was in Africa. He just visited the slums, and he'd done this thing, and he'd built helped build a hut. Friday night comedy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, honestly, I don't think it'd be in the program. It's a bit too heavy. But Carl was genuinely moved and depressed. He felt guilty that he was on telly helping someone because he didn't want to look like one of those actors who go out and do comic relief to go look at me, look at me. I was going, no, you, we don't need to show it. We don't need to show it. So he's very, very, very thoughtful about these things. It's not like he's, he, he's not thick-skinned, he's not an emotionless person. He, he's the same as anyone, he feels the same as everyone. Um, but he sometimes thinks before he thinks. <laughs> and, and, uh, I've got to go to the Japanese embassy to talk about how it's a good place to go. Have yeah, you? they found out he was going, they want him to talk. So what are you gonna say? I mean, this is to do with the fact that they're worried that people aren't going there because they think of nuclear fallout or And I was worried about that. I, yeah. I said to you, I don't want to go, and you said, it's fine. Yeah. But I don't know if it is. Was it Japan where you were complaining about them not having toilet doors? No, that's China. China. He you said they invented the iPod. Yeah, he confused Japan and China, of course oh, he did, okay. yeah, but now he knows the difference. No, He's me, been the both. argument was they built a massive great big wall, but they can't put doors on toilets. It didn't add up to me, that. Mm. <laughs> but, forget that, that was last time I've moved on, I'm wiser. Yeah. <laughs> but with Japan, <laughs> it's an all right place. I don't think it's radiation. There was earthquakes happening when I was there. It's the food. We've mm. got to sort that out. What's wrong with the food? I mean, that'd be one of my main reasons to go. They no, don't cook the fish. It's just fish all the time for everything. And well, some fish that you just go, where have they got that from? <laughs> you go in fishmongers and you know what fish look like. Sometimes it's like, has someone <laughs> coughed that up? <laughs> <laughs> What is it? <laughs> what is it? And they're, they're loving it. <laughs> and that is the worst thing, because at the end of the day, food's important, isn't it? When you go on holiday, you like, you know, that's why I like Italy and that, you get pasta. Right. Yeah. This fish, honestly. If you get pasta here now, I've told you, you can get it in Waitrose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so what you're going to say at the embassy is, if you want people to go to your country, there needs change, to be a dramatic just, just cultural Just say, you're shift. not going to get radiation poisoning, but you could die from a fish. Yeah. If they don't, if the chef doesn't cut it just right, you might die from eating a fish. No one's going to go to your country unless they start serving pasta. They've just got to open it up a little bit. Yeah. Everywhere noodles, you went. they've got noodles. I know, but they didn't seem to, uh, it's noodles with fish in. You can't <laughs> escape it. It was just a fish all the time. It's like living in an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, proper struggle with that. That's, that's my thing. As long as I've got a comfy bed and some food, I'm happy anyway. Carl, I've got some good news here. This is, uh, Sounds like something from Willy Wonka in the chocolate factory. It, this is Jim in bed eating <laughs> pasta. This is Javid in Huddersfield. He says, I've got uh, the same experience as Carl. I worked with a family years ago who also had a horse which they kept in the kitchen. You were explaining earlier, yeah, a friend, uh, someone who you kept a horse in the living room. Does yeah. happen. There you go, it does happen. Does happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's have a look at some more text. Dear Ricky. Carl, Carl. what do you say to those people? that, um, say you're not qualified to do a travel show because- Well, who is? <laughs> <laughs> who is? 
<laughs> I've been sent to these countries. I'm saying what I'm seeing. What? What? Why do you need to be educated on that? I agree. Well, that is actually agree. not a bad point, is it? What would qualify? Carl, Why do you have to be qualified? Carl, what do you say to these people who say this is another example of dumbing down? Um, since when well, was it? Right, since, right, right. <laughs> let me listen, finish. Let me talking? finish. Mm. I'm speaking to right. What do you say to these people who say it's another example of dumbing down? Since when are we meant to celebrate right. idiocy? Right. That's, well, I mean, first that's... of all, this isn't license pays money. We're on Sky. I'm probably after a, a program <laughs> called Dogs with Jobs. So let's not worry about <laughs> what what what's good and what isn't. Right. So there's one point. Secondly. <laughs> The other night, I was in when Made in Chelsea was on. So, before they get to me, there's a lot of other programmes yeah. people can have a whinge about. Um, I agree. I reckon, yeah, yeah. I know that I don't always get things right, I don't always give clear information. Sometimes I watch it back and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you stop yourself during a sentence yeah. and you say, what was I saying? But I think there's something in there. You said it looks nice. It does, yeah, it you looks can beautiful. watch it with the sound beautiful. down. I think You'll still brilliant. get something out of it. It's great. A lot of telly now, I don't know what it is anymore. Yeah, I agree. I don't know what, I, what, what is going on. Actually, it, you know, I suppose the public service element is you go to places that I wouldn't have thought of going to and I find that I want to go to them. Well, After good, having seen your programme. That, that is good. That's a public service And that's thing, all isn't I'm it? saying. I'm not saying no one should come here. I'm just uh, saying my problems with it. Some of the kind of tribes people that you meet, how about for Series 3, inviting some of them back to your house? Thoughts? No. I don't Carl, know. Carl, what do you say to those people that say um, you're bordering on the racist with the things you say about people other cultures? People have said that, mm. and I don't know if they can actually pick a point, if they can edit it out and send it to me and say this bit. Because I don't know what they're talking about. No, nor do I. It's an easy thing for people to whinge about now. Mm, I agree. It's racist. Some people did say that, didn't they? Was that some? But I don't I know which bit. I, I thought. Oh, well, know. there was one bit where um, he was on a coach and uh, 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 in China, and um, a lot of them were sort of just gobbing in bags and on the floor, and he found it disgusting. That's mm. bad, isn't it? I, I, I would find it disgusting if anyone. That's anyone's. not racist. Of course it's not. Of course it's not. But it, it was. It's and that again. Is, it's twist to say that he's ta he's he's despising a culture. And Richard, he's, this isn't made up. This isn't us getting on a bus saying, right, listen, we're filming now. Can everyone spit in a bag? The, the, that sound. <laughs> that sound. That sort of. We need thirty Chinese extras with little bags. Okay. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> everywhere you go in China, you're just hearing that sort of clearing of throat. Everywhere you go, just. <laughs> That sort of sound, which is horrible. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> well, honestly, that's it's like a, a mobile ring. You're just co constantly hearing that noise, and people say, "Oh, did, did you see much of China?" No, I didn't really see much of it because I'm walking round with my head down, making sure I'm not standing in the stuff. <laughs> it's everywhere. But then again, it's a very great, sort of grey, depressing place, so it adds a bit of colour, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that was last time. I have moved on, and I have enjoyed. But what do you say to those people? Is that you're saying oh, you do don't accept cultural differences, and that maybe here it's <laughs> disgusting, but in China it's acceptable. So you're the odd one out. So you should accept it and go along with. What do you say to those people, Carl? But then, what's the program? If I'm if I'm just I going agree. around like mm. a lot of these mm. programs do, where they stand there and they go, oh, oh it's oh, absolutely flim. amazing. Yeah. Oh, isn't it lovely? Are oh, they flam up everywhere? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what, what the holiday program was, wasn't it? Uncritical. Yeah. Judith Charm was going. Two nights. And there's a go lovely bit of gob here. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay here for forty quid. Don't <laughs> slip on the greenies. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not just. I don't walk around moaning saying. You do. All you, right. You do. But you Sometimes. say it as you see it. That's the point. Uh, that's all it is. I'm gonna take some travel. Stay there. <laughs> stay there. I, I know you're keen to go, Carl, but I want you also want you to meet the actress Jessica <laughs> Chastain who's coming as well. All right, stay there. <laughs> <That's really> awkward. <laughs> 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 so reluctant. <laughs> it's ten to three, Louise Pepper, what's up? Uh, dear Ricky and Carl, my wife and I watched Cemetery Junction last Wednesday. The standout performance for us was Carl, mm. as a bald man with sideburns and a tash. Yeah. Carl clearly has a gift for acting. Does he have any further roles lined up? Um, well, I've, I've offered him a role. I've, I've got a, I'm shooting a pilot, uh, a couple of pilots, actually, um, at the end of the year, and um, I've invited Carl to do a little piece there. I can't tell you about it, it's top secret, but he said yes. Um, so much Junction was a good day. Can you tell day. us anything about it? Um, uh, I will, but, um, but I just want to tell you about Sandwich Junction. Um, we were filming that, I called Carl up. I said, Carl, do you want to be an extra for a laugh? Just, to the, just, for the, just for the Pilkey fans out there. And he went, no. I went, oh, go on. He went, no. I said, it's pork chop catering, pork chop. He went, 
All right, how long will it take? I went, 20 minutes, he went, all right. So, got him a car, he came down, he had pork chops, didn't you? Yeah. Good, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, I said to the makeup people, I said, make him look as gimp as possible. So they put on this awful, sort of curly wig, gave him a moustache, he looked amazing. But, he was comfortable with it, because he was sort of hiding behind it. And then just before we shot it, we whipped his wig off. <laughs> and it was like we'd woken up a baby bird and thrown him out the nest. <laughs> he was really it, it It's actually on one of the, the outtakes, and it's him. I'm, I'm crying with laughter because he's looking around, everyone's looking at him, and he said, This is like a nightmare. And so we thought it was funnier with his little bald head and the moustache, and it, it worked, didn't it? But mm. what's interesting <laughs> about that, Carl, is you were comfortable hiding behind a bit of a mask. Yeah. Yeah. You, you were comfortable watching yourself as a cartoon on the Ricky yeah. Bay show. Maybe you should do some acting. Maybe you should pop on a Nambas because then that's <laughs> like we've dressed up your genitals as a completely different set of genitals, and so it's not your genitals in a way. What do you think of that, Carl? Yeah, that's a good but point. <laughs> good point. Um, five live. Um, the thing is, I can't remember words. Right. So, like, Ricky got me to do an advert for one of his stand up things. How long was it? 30 seconds. Mm. I can't remember. I'm not got to be an actor, you've got to have a good memory. If it was that thing where they just go make it up, yeah, I can right. do that. You can't remember 30 seconds. Well, that's what I do. Honestly, it's really hard. my film roles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just make some on the day. Is that all right? I, I couldn't, I can't do that. It's a tricky bit of, uh... Just, uh, for, just for, Carl, what do you say to those people, um, who say, because of your, um, mental disability, uh, that I am bullying you and, exp uh, and exploiting you? What do you say to those Carl, people? Carl, interesting question, Carl. Mm. Uh, it's been asked a lot, but no one's stepping in, are they? <laughs> No one's helping, are they? <laughs> it's gone on for ten years. They say what goes around comes around. When's it coming round then? When's something gonna happen to him? When's someone gonna squeeze his head? <laughs> what you're saying is if people are accusing him of bullying, why aren't they actually well, rather just doing about it? What are they There's doing about say, it? Oh, this is bullying. All right. Well, what, you, what are you watching it for then? It's ridiculous. Of course, not bullying. We're friends. You know, it did. All these people would rather whinge about it. They've all got the conspiracy theories, but. What are we meant to do? We're making this. We don't care whether anyone likes these shows or not. We don't care. We'd rather they enjoyed it, of course, but we, we're not interested. We just say, it's not for you then. We don't care about anything. You, you care that some people like it. Well, because you get the chance to make it again. That's the only reason we care. But if any, if anyone says, do you want to make another one, that's all that matters to us. He doesn't want to make another one. Well, you know, going to a third series? No, the, the, I mean, if there's anything, there's I've come up with another else. idea. What is it? Um, it's him and Warwick Davis going round, uh, Carl on a bike with Warwick in the basket. That's all that, 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 and that is the idea, Richard. <laughs> that's as far as it goes. I said, what then? That's a, that's ten seconds of title the sequence. Where's the bike gonna go? It'd be going around sort of like weird sort of events and festivals of England and, um, they'd just be, it'd, it'd be great. It's like, it's like two fat cooks. Yeah, but, but the difference yeah. is there. The they took it in turns you know, to s cycle on that. Warwick's legs aren't going to reach the thing. It's always going to be me cycling him about. And even though he's small, he's still heavy, you know. Mm. I've had him sat on my lap, which is an odd thing to say out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but Ricky sorted it out for him to come in and sit and have a chat with me once. And he's heavy for a little while. Why fella. did he sit on? Why, uh, <coughs> weren't there any chairs? Why was he sat on your lap? There wasn't a chair for him, was there? No, there was, only, there was only two. I only ordered two. Right. Oh. Carl, I've been looking at the list. 100 things to do before you die. 41 meet your idol. Why don't you go with that one? Never do that, never do Who's that. Who's your idol? I haven't got any. Haven't I haven't got any? got any, no. Okay. Uh, no? No, it's best not to. But you, you, you like, you respect him, you like Bruce Willis, don't you? Yeah, but that's all he is, he's just, he's, I, I don't want to meet him, I just like die hard, but well done Bruce, but I don't want to meet them. What do no, you want to meet them no I don't understand that, I've never understood that as what you can get what, out what's of What's the best that can happen? 67, mm. join the Mile High Club. No. What, again? Ridiculous. Stupid. Yeah. Why? It's nothing to be proud of. Well, I, d I don't get it. And there's, I, I don't like using the toilet on a plane for using it as a toilet because <laughs> I always feel like I'm in a rush. <laughs> there's always someone might be waiting outside, <laughs> timing me. Do you know they know how long you've been in there? <laughs> so just the, just the idea of that is is horrendous. They're, they're the most unpleasant of all toilets. Aren't yeah. They? Uh, Jessica Chastain. Hello there. Hello. Hello. An inelegant point in which to bring you in. Well. <laughs> Welcome. Talking about toilets, Jessica Chastain. What? The toilets? <laughs> why? Why? Um, I use the toilet before I came in. Yeah. You've got sort of five live pumped out everywhere you go in here. You can't escape it. That's right. Why doesn't it do it in the toilet? Well, it's in the lifts, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know why it doesn't. Do you it. want it in the toilet? I think. 
I think people would sit down too long. They wouldn't leave. Right, thank you, mm. Jessica. Good point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best review you've ever had. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, want, I, I need to hear your show on the toilet. Do you know they do that in Japan on the toilets there? There's a button you press and it sounds like you're flushing it so you don't worry about other people hearing uh, what you're doing. Yeah. Good, so what it? you do, you're just constantly flushing a toilet? <laughs> it, yeah, but you're not, it's a sound effect. It's a little button. But why not a different sound effect? Why not people screaming? <laughs> the sound of torture. <laughs> what, what, you know what I mean? It's arbitrary, isn't it? Right, it's Jessica's turn now, isn't it? <laughs> 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 Jessica, uh, Jessica Chastain is um, already, you're in uh, an enormous number of films that are coming up. You're in The Debt, which is about to be released, which is yeah. an outstanding film with a remarkable performance by you. You've got to see The Debt. It's about a cell of Mossad agents in the 1960s that go Nazi hunting. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, Jessica starred opposite Brad Pitt in The Tree of Life by Terence Malick recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. everyone on the planet will probably know your name within about a year. But meanwhile, I spoke to you last night at the premiere <laughs> and you were quite excited. Uh, and that's an understatement about yeah. meeting Ricky and Carl. No. You've listened to- have you downloaded the podcast? No. Yeah, I've actually, um... No, this is just awkward. No, it's really awkward. It's <laughs> really <laughs> embarrassing you now. You don't have to, I know, because no, I swear. was just being polite last night, no, and now no, he's no. making I a big deal. I remember the podcast about, like, you guys talking about Brokeback Mountain, and oh. I mean, there's- really, I, oh, I'm did. such a fan. Oh, and I, I saw you at Madison Square Garden. Oh, wow. Right. So, um, you know, it's funny- Hang on, this is like your bucket list. You meet in an Exactly. Angle. I never really thought that I would meet you guys. <laughs> you it's going, I think it's going too far. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but that means also I'm about to die, right? If it's a bucket list. Uh, You're uh, like him. Well, it doesn't mean dying. that. <laughs> he thought it meant things to do immediately before you die. It does mean that. No, it means to do things to do in your life. No, no, no. Who's going to run around when they're feeling <laughs> sick, jumping in dolphins and fighting Eskimos? That's the point of a bucket <laughs> Having list. Having sex on aeroplanes. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I've got six months to live. This is what I'm going to do before I die. Really? That's what a bucket right. list is. There you go. Uh, Ricky, it's three o'clock. <laughs> Hold on, now. <laughs> what are you saying? Are you saying <laughs> people are, uh, No. It's time for the news. Uh, it's yeah. time for the news. Ricky, you've got to go. I haven't even mentioned list. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought right. keep the bucket is things to do of, before you die. So you've you got the bucket. You should. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> Carl's but walking I, out. I, I, bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Ricky, Ricky, do you want to do five more minutes? Talk about life's too short. It's up to you. Unless you've got to go. Okay, I'll just very quickly wait for that. Okay, sure. Okay, we're going to do five minutes of news, then five minutes. Sure. Okay. Sure. Do you want a picture of Ricky? Yeah, okay. if you can. Um, thank you, during the news. Right, Ricky Gervais is still here, <laughs> and we'll Fascinating talk radio. <laughs> it's like we are talking amongst ourselves. I mean, it's like they've the forgotten radio. that this is broadcasting. <laughs> That's the, that is the best radio. I totally agree, that is the best radio. On digital and Ricky Gervais is still here, Jessica Chastain is with me, star of The Debt and The Tree of Life. Ricky, do you want to hear some texts from people commenting on the last hour? Oh, go on. When Carl was here, Carl's left now. I'm laughing so much I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Carl does to me, though. <laughs> I think people don't get it, that when you're in a room with him, and I get, I, I get this sort of all day, I, I feel so privileged. I don't know anyone like him, I just cannot get enough of him. I, he's the first phone call I make, he's like a backdrop to my existence. If I'm watching television and it's on Channel 5 and it's like the, the baby born with two heads, right? <laughs> I call Carl and he answers the phone like this. Weird, isn't it? <laughs> so now I know he's watching it. So now I'm watching it and I'm getting d uh, double whammy because I, I call him, what do you think of that? And he texts me, it's just, he's remarkable. He's got a different outlook on everything. Just that thing about the Mile High Club. Yeah. It is straight away to, I don't even like using it as a toilet. Yeah. You know, it's just got a lovely He's got an instant perspective on it. He's got an uh, original and instant, he's, he's the, he sees the world differently. D when you've listened to the podcast, Jessica, have you ever thought, some people think, oh, Carl's a bit of an act. Have you ever thought that? This is the first time I've met him. Um, no, I actually didn't think he was an act because uh, he just seems so um, deadpan and honest and... Um, that's, you know, it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And also, but, everyone's got a mate like that. They just haven't got a mate like me to get him on set. <laughs> 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 Dear Richard, please tell Carl I can't wait for the new series. I love the last one. I watched it, I was heavily pregnant at the time and I laughed so much I went into labour. Excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl, you're a different class. At last, somebody on telly worth watching. You're witty, insightful, and intelligent. I had to pull my car over. I'm laughing my head off. I want Carl as a mate, says John in Cambridge. Yes, exactly. Uh, and so it goes on. Ricky, let's talk about uh, Life's Too Short, which is your new comedy that you've written with Stephen Merchant, starring Warwick Davis. Uh, what is the premise, exactly? Um, it's, um, it's a return to the fake documentary. Um, uh, if The Office was one of those sort of... Uh, 
reflected those doc docu soaps, those quaint docu soaps of the nineties, where normal people sort of got fifty minutes of fame. This is brought it up to date. This is like modern documentaries where people live their life like an open wound to get another fifteen minutes of fame. Um, and Warwick Davis plays a twisted version of himself. He really was in all those films, but his um, career's on the slide. He's going through a messy divorce. He's got a terrible accountant, so he's got a two hundred fifty thousand pound tax bill, and so he does this documentary. And he so he he runs a talent. A dwarf talent agency. Yeah, which he, he does in real life. He does in real life. There's nothing funny about that. There's nothing funny about that. Um, um, he does in real life. In real life, it's called Willow, which is named after his <laughs> famous role. Um, well, we've got one fan. She's going to be loving it. She, li she likes the premise, let alone the... Um, and uh, in this one, it's called Dwarves for Hire, a little <laughs> bit more on the nose. But in this one, of course, he's exploiting the other little people and he's taking all their jobs for himself. So it's not it's not a comedy about a guy being short. It's a, about... Uh, She'd be happy with you that. You just like the word short. <laughs> I'm just this thinking is that of Willow. Easy. <laughs> See, I spent a lot of time on this. I didn't have to. <laughs> I didn't have to. I could just show pictures of dwarves. Is it a load of dwarf jokes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No, but, um... <laughs> <laughs> um, it's about him having a small man complex, which yeah. She laughed at small. She <laughs> laughed at the word small. Small Tiny. And short. <laughs> Tiny. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Have a look at his little clip. So it's a short 12-second clip, and this is Warwick Davis in conversation with another dwarf. The director's furious he wants to find you. It's not my fault, I don't know the sign. You're a dwarf, how can you not know hi-ho, hi-ho? And something about whistling. You don't know whistle while you work. I've never heard it before. How is this possible? I don't know. Uh, what, you were just talking to Jessica about Yes, yeah, so I've just realised that, that, that in America, dwarf is a derogatory term. Yeah. No, you're supposed to say little person. Yeah, exactly, which we do here as well, but dwarf is okay <laughs> here as long as they have dwarfism. It's a specific but type of little person. This is going Midget on HBO. is out. Midget, Midget you cannot say that. That, cannot. Is, that's that the is the M word. worst thing that's you could terrible. say. That's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, um, uh, uh, and... Is it uh, going on HBO, isn't it? Uh, yeah, well, they, uh, they were concerned about it, but I think they know that it's, uh, you know, it's set in England, and, uh, uh we... Also, we're never using it a derogatory way, we're, uh, you know, it, it's, it's people. But a midget is different from a dwarf. Well, um, well, yeah, dwarfism specific. A midget is, I, I think, officially... We're saying, we've just <laughs> said you can't say it, and we've said it about 15 <laughs> times. The well, M word <laughs> is to do with someone being under a certain height and, uh, and yeah. perfectly proportions due to a... I, I don't want to go into it. And just be clear, anyway, we're not, we're not laughing at short people. We're laughing no. at language. Of yeah, like, we are. like Mini-Me is a midget. Yeah, well... I don't know, as in because the show, Warwick Davis says, I don't know what he is. <laughs> he says, I, he said, I'm all for being short, he said, but he's taking it too far. <laughs> right? No, we're not laughing. We're not, in the show, we're not laughing at, um, being short or no. short people. And we're not doing that now. It's the, we're, of course, not, no. we're not doing it now. No, it's a grown-up show. We're not yeah. laughing on it. Um, she was. I we was weren't. not. I was laughing at you. <laughs> yeah. When you were, your it's, face. <laughs> when you were talking about it. <laughs> it's, it's a this grown up show. This has done me no good at all. <laughs> I know. Uh, the, you know, the people who are already up in arms about it could be offensive. We don't know. Of no. course it's not offensive. Yeah, they yeah. are. Our people say, oh, is this, um, they say it for two reasons. One, because it's got a, a, a little person in it. They assume it has to be cruel or nasty or laughing at his expense. Once again, like we're exploiting him. Like we paid him in magic beans as opposed <laughs> to him being, uh, you know, an executive producer. And two, I think it's because I've got this reputation as a shock comedian, which I've never been. I've seen The Office, they've seen extras, and still they think, oh, it's going to be awful and nasty and no. exploitative, which is, which is not in the slightest. Okay, uh, no. Just final question before you go. Are you going to do the Golden Globes Dwarf again? is a funny word, though. <laughs> it is a funny because word. Because it's antiquated. So even though it's still, it's just a funny word because it's, it's sort of been mugged and used you by know, Snow White. It, it, exactly. Yeah, the yeah. word yeah. is funny. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Snow White is a fictional seven. character, though, by the way. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's not technically. Yeah. <laughs> Carl gets a lot of his information from fairy tales. <laughs> Planet of the Apes and the Flintstones. Uh, have you Just been like religious really fundamentalists. A lot of them <laughs> get their uh, get view of the world they don't based get on the Flintstones, where dinosaurs roamed with man. <laughs> 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 Although Flintstones would technically predate the creation of the biblical earth, wouldn't they? How dare yes, you? Yes, they would. You're right. How dare You're very you? very right. <laughs> no, he's Blasphemy. right. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> the Earth is 5,000 years old. <laughs> did, did you... When... That's scientifically proven. <laughs> it is. It is. The, the science is in the Bible. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, did you... What more evidence do you need? Do you know, um, at the end of the Golden Globes, when you closed it by saying, thank you, God, for making me an atheist, yeah. did you get a, a kind of... We were talking mm. about the people online at the on, you uh, very well, yeah, interesting What was the reaction to that? Did you... Oh, how, how dare I? How dare I mention the word? Do you get word? violent threats? Oh, what, well, what, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I doubt. I, I think uh, you, you don't read forums. But no, of course not. No, um, it's, it's a few... It's a few 
people, a few people that think that it was it was disgusting and out of place. Um, I mean, one, it was a play on words. Thanks God for making us. I'm acknowledging the God and why do you make me of course, right? That's the joke. Um, but also, it was a reaction to everyone at award shows who thanks God because they won that award. Like, he hasn't got better things to do. <laughs> You've got earthquakes, famine. <laughs> Hold on, no, I want it to go to her. Yeah, nice one. It's also saying thank you, God, uh, right? Like, um, he had something to do with it because you needed it. So, one, you didn't deserve it, but he pulled a few strings. You know, it's, mm, it's yeah. a ludicrous to thank God for anything. I mean, it, it, as an atheist, it's ridiculous, but even if you believe in God, it's strange <laughs> that he would choose to, to, do you know what I mean? Oh, well, I thought yeah. when people pray to get a better exam result, so do you think, well, you know, why would, why would he pick you over someone else anyway? Just and also, why are you praying? He knows what you think, he knows everything, yeah. it's all powerful. <laughs> That's true. So it's pointless. Um, are you going to do the? Have you been offered the Globes? No, no. NBC want me to do it, but they will never persuade the Hollywood Foreign Press. They hate me. I think it's because I introduced the president as saying um, I just helped him off the toilet and popped his teeth in. Um, <laughs> so that that could be, be why. Uh, also, yes, I don't think you live. You, do you live oh, in Hollywood? No. Do you live in LA? Yeah. Yep. Are they sensitive to those sorts of jokes over there? Well, you know, there is there is something about um, you know um, you know the California. Peace, love, being positive. Smile. Yeah, it's not that. It's because the, the award shows are meant to be mutual backslap, and everyone um, saying how brilliant everyone else is, as long as they say how brilliant you are. And I made a, a decision: do I do I pander to the two hundred most privileged people in the world in the room, or the two hundred million people watching at home? Award shows are boring and pointless. Mm. They are the, they are not a spectator sport. So I tried to make it one. Uh, are you saying the Hollywood Press Association have blocked it? NBC said yes, and they've blocked it. They, well, they just I, said, I, no, I, you're not doing well, it. Well, they said that at the time, and I don't think they'd be persuaded. I mm -hmm. think they want their own little industry, and they want to celebrate, and that's fine. Okay. But that's, I'm not the man for the job. Uh, Ricky, thanks for coming in. Thanks for staying so long. My pleasure. Uh, it's always tremendous. <laughs> great. Meet into your to time. You. Give us some extra time. <laughs> no, she's got to try and backpedal about laughing at... No, it work. wasn't me. It was the face you were making. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a webcam there. <laughs> so, yes. thank you. Too many people. Nice to yeah. meet you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, remind me when the abroad starts again? Was it uh, tomorrow, 23rd. Uh, tomorrow. Friday, 9 o'clock, Sky. You've got to see the debt. I will. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, bye -bye. Ricky. Bye bye. bye. Good afternoon to very special guests, Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington. Round of applause for both. Wow. You alright? It always happens eventually. Okay. What? You can come into Radio 1 really cool and trendy and happening and new, and soon you end up doing that, like a zoo format. Soon you'd, everyone eventually turns into Simon Bates. When you're 40, you'll be saying things like, and that's a wicked tune there. There's <laughs> <laughs> me tenters. She hasn't changed a bit. <laughs> well... well Hello? <laughs> Only on Fridays. <laughs> I was confused! <laughs> that, hello? In the moment. No, what, It's what? really? Is that as loud as it goes, that? Why have you got headphones on? We don't need headphones. <laughs> We're just talking. Oh. They're listening. Do you want headphones on? Uh, no, not if they're only that quick. Is that health and safety? Yeah, they're, 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 really they're limited, yeah. That's ridiculous. Mm. I yeah, listen to that. Okay, but you know we're on air now, Well, I wouldn't you? know, because I can't hear it. <laughs> 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 just talk. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Yeah, okay, you don't need them anyway. I, I've got a special pair of non-limited ones. I sometimes, on? Carl, I feel like your helper. <laughs> How have you survived? It's, it's birthday today. Thirty-nine today. Oh. Thirty-nine years old. Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, he's done all right, hasn't he? Yeah. Mrs. Have you had a nice Matthews? day so far? It was that Mrs. Matthews at school yeah, said he wouldn't be a high chips, flyer, though. and he is a high flyer. He's been around the world twice. Have you had a nice day? Number so far? one selling book. Um, number one DVD. Um, New show starts tonight. Carl Pilkington. So kids. I've had an all right day. I've so got, kids, I, I, if you want to muck around at school, do nothing. Play out on your grifter all day. Uh, leave school at uh, uh, 15 with no qualifications at all, then things could happen for you. you it's good advice. You're a great role model, did you Did you are. do well at school, Greg? I can't imagine uh, you did all right. I, <laughs> I did okay. I did all right. I, I was- I was an av- I was average. I was- I was okay yeah. at exams. You see, you have a go and everything, but you did all right, but what are you doing? Stephen Fry, dead brainy, is doing a panel show. It's wasted. <laughs> You've got a brain, do something with it. <laughs> I'm not having a go at Stephen Fry. Cards, I'm, I'm a big admirer of Stephen Fry, but what I'm saying is, mm. there's no difference between me and him, really, in terms of work. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I wasn't dissing you. I was saying, well done. I was uh, I was dissing Mrs. Matthews for saying you weren't high fly, but then I felt a little bit guilty about sending out a message to the, the listeners of Radio One that you know, yeah, that you're 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 you are the odd one out. You've put the work in late in life. And it's well, that's brilliant. the best time to do it. I think when you're a kid, mm. play out, play with stuff. Yeah. Not Fine. matches, not matches. Or drugs. 
No. No. And Floss. Floss Kids. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've done well. I mean, you, you are quite similar to Stephen Fry, best-selling, uh, best-selling author. Yeah, I've done some books. Have you yeah. got a panel show on the way? Uh, don't really want to be doing that. No, next next project, I'm, I want to send him round on a bicycle with Warwick Davis in a basket. Um, it's called- Is that for Sky One, yeah? Uh, no, no, uh, well, there's, uh, we've uh, had offers already, um. Yeah, Stephen Fry turned that one down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get a basket big enough. Um, but Warwick's not as heavy as Fry. So, uh, yeah, it's called The Short Way Round. Cool. And, um, that'll be coming to our screens in 2012. But yeah, it's on tonight. Idiot Abroad 2, <laughs> Sky 1 HD, 9 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. What, what can you say about a car? Why should they watch? It's, uh, it's Friday night, it's a Friday night, kids are out. No, it's a bit annoying. They're listening to Esme Denters all over the place. They don't want to- I don't think, I, mean, I don't think I appeal to kids anymore. <laughs> Just your lot who you've got in, I felt well out of my depth, Greg. Really? <laughs> Honestly. Proper like, these are proper young people. Yeah, well, I think- I'm 39 today, it was weird walking in, it was like, <laughs> scum. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean their scum. I mean the film. You see, they won't even know what I mean. There was a film in the seventies yeah. of a Borstal. Oh, yeah, and, like loads that. of kids in it, and it was terrifying. <laughs> I felt. How does that make you feel? All right. No, I thought you were quite nice enough. Scum. But it was like, no, I don't mean that. Oh, I mean no. they're like someone out of Skins. Mm. If I was walking down the street and they were on my side, I'd cross because I'd be scared. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to that age <laughs> where I feel older. <laughs> and Radio One's like that. The music you play, I have no idea what you're doing. Do you know Jason Derulo? No. Um, say three names that you play on Radio 1, see if it- okay. make one up and see if I know which one it is. That's a good game. Do right. you play a record now, though? Because, um, are we- this is definitely going out on air, isn't it? This is being broadcast, this show. Yep. Are you sure you, we shouldn't have pre-recorded this and edited it down to a soundbite? Possibly. <laughs> Basically going, happy birthday, Carl. Yeah. And then- it's on tonight. <laughs> what- what are you playing next? Make uh, something up or don't make it up. by Graham Thorpent. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is Jason Derulo. Do you know he's real? I don't- I Well, it is real, yeah, but you've given that away. <laughs> okay. Jason Derulo, Don't Wanna Go Home on Radio 1. Did you enjoy that one, Carl, or not? Um, it was- it was alright. Mm. It's not, uh... But you used to be into your dancing, didn't you? I like a dance. I've seen him dance. We was round- he was round my flat once, and we were all drunk, and he was moonwalking, weren't you? In yeah, his socks I can do a bit of that. Yeah. Um, I did- I did sort of dancing. I, I joined a dancing sort of place when I was younger. No, you didn't. Really? No, you didn't. You didn't. You went along and it was shut. <laughs> I wanted to join a dancing class. Right. When I was younger it was called Twiggies in Old Trafford and I had leg warmers and everything. I was into- well they weren't proper leg warmers. They were- <laughs> my dad made them out of one of his old shirts. He just cut the arms off. Yeah. So I had like leg warmers with cuffs. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And, um, but I can do- I, I'm pretty good at sort of robot stuff. I mean, think of that. I mean, turn that. <laughs> trying to. A little bald mank, right, <laughs> with- looks like he's walking on his hands. He wasn't always bald. <laughs> no, I know. Early though, wasn't it? When, when, when I was a baby, I was. When yeah. I, I was bald then. Yeah. Well, you weren't doing a dance class when you were a baby. You had hair no, for was... about 15 years and then it went again. I never had good hair. Do you know, like, you've got a style, I've never had that in your life. <laughs> no, you know why? Because he said- he said he had the hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> I mean, forget the term Chinaman, which is totally outdated. For That's the what the barber years. said. He said yeah. the the sort of quality of it, very fine, very sort of blowy way, sort of air. Mm. And he just said you got hair of a Chinaman. Yeah. Nice compliment. <laughs> that's not having a go, that's a fact, isn't it? I don't know why people worry. You always, that, that's the problem with this program. Always, everyone's always going, oh, it's a little bit, a little bit racist at times. It isn't at all. There's not, there's nothing that I wouldn't say. No, there's nothing racist in there. There's nothing in it. No, because you, you, it's your opinion, you've got- he hasn't got a malicious bone in his body, he just says the first thing that comes into his head. And I think that's why it's a really interesting documentary. Because it's not all whitewashed. It's not Judith Chalmers going around saying, this is a lovely resort, isn't it wonderful here? Oh, look at this custom. He goes there and going, oh god, everyone's gobbing. He hates <laughs> it. Right? He says- he says what he's thinking and, it, and we- we show it warts and all, you know. No, Carl, that- did- did you genuinely hate doing the first series? There must have been bits we must- you, you enjoyed a bit. S- uh, episodes one, two and three, I hated it, honestly. Really? To the point of trying to get out of it. Then by the end of it, I'd sort of- I got back home, was over the moon, that it was finished, and then there was something- I, I kind of looked at photographs and thought, I can't believe I've been there, I can't believe I've done that. Pretty lucky. And then, yeah, that's why I did the second lot, really. Because I kind of thought, I hate it at the time, but I know that when it's all done, I'll be happier. 
I've seen the first episode yeah. of the new series, and it is ridiculous. I mean, what can you, what can you say about it? I, mean, I don't want to give it away, but... Well, it's, I mean, the, the whole the thing one? about it is the bucket list, which is like a list that people put together of things that they want to do before they die. Ricky and Steve put a list together, which I've got a copy of here, so you can see <laughs> the sort of things that I could have done. The, this is the okay. list that I chose from, That's some the, more well, on the back. Okay. It was sort of compiled by the <clears> most <throat> popular things that always come up. So they're sort of like the oh, okay, top so hundred most popular things that most people say. Right, so see um, elephant, elephants in the wild. Exactly. Climb Mount Everest. Yeah. Mm. Swim with dolphins. Yeah. Gamble in Las Vegas. Re uh, re amazing things. Stuff like that. And I, I was allowed to pick seven of them. So I did. But there's a lot of things on there that I don't want to do, but they still cropped up. Like, bungee jumping's a big deal. I didn't want to do it. I know I didn't want to do it. But when I got to, like, you know, a part of the trip, turns out they've, you know, Ricky and Steve have got me still on the edge of this bungee thing. So a lot of things happened that, that I didn't know was coming still. But the end, the end thing that I'm doing, that's the thing I've picked. So I've picked staying a night on a desert island. Uh, I've picked driving down Route 66, looking at a gorilla, uh, f messing about with some. It's just like different stuff, isn't it? Yeah, that's um, a great description. It's just like different stuff. That's what we hope they put in the Radio <laughs> Times. It's just like different stuff. I'm so trying to think. What, now, what are you and Steve actually doing whilst whilst Carl's doing? Are you? actually orchestrating stuff or you just uh, yeah, on the, end of the uh, phone there's there's this strange myth that goes around that it's scripted this show is scripted like uh, Carl's an actor or a comedian uh, uh, Carl doesn't know what's going to happen sometimes he has to by the time he gets there but it's planned behind his back but it's not scripted i mean imagine uh, how could we script this I mean, imagine just casting it. Okay, I need a little Indian fella who can wrap his knob around a stick. Okay, but we got one. Okay, Carl, what are you going to say about that? It's ridiculous. These are these are real things that he's gone to see, um, and um, it, he says we stick a camera in his face, and he says the first thing. Like anyone would, though. People yeah. sort of. I, I think if if they sent you, you'd have stuff to say because you're out. If you're out of your comfort zone, you well, say stuff. That's the important thing. We have to put him out of his comfort zone. It's no good him doing things that are, are lovely and a, a walk in the park and him just pointing stuff out. That's boring. And we've got hundreds of those. We've had hundreds of those for years. Hmm. So this is someone who, who's reluctant and it's got to be a surprise. And we, you know, I know how to press his buttons. You know, I've, I've done it for ten years now. My, I, I've had two big ambitions over the last ten years. One is sort of educate Carl. I love the fact that he came to me sort of like a, a blank canvas, and he's so inquisitive. He's, I think he's brilliant. I think he's got a brilliant mind. He just hasn't used it much. And the other thing is I want to get Carl famous, because I know he hate it. But it's happened. It has happened. Hasn't it? If this, I told Carl, if this trend carries on, he's going to be bigger than Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just <laughs> apologise for what Ricky just said about the, the chap a minute ago with the what? stick and everything? What? The, uh, that happened? No, no, no it's, it's, means, just, uh, it's just the, the, word. the word. It's just the word. Sorry if you're offended um, by that word. Nob is old English, and it's totally acceptable. It's not. It's not a swear word. It's not a profanity. It it's not at all. It's not. Okay. Well, anyway, if you're offended, whatever. But uh, Carl, tonight, what's your favourite thing about this new series? Can you give out a, a little uh, something? That was favourite thing? thing. Well, it's now that it's over. That's like the favourite <laughs> thing. Because uh, it's hard work. I mean, people sort of watch it and go, oh, "You're really lucky. Why are you moaning? You're getting to see the world and everything." But it's proper hard work. I'm not sleeping. I'm eating geckos. <laughs> I mean, there's stuff going on that isn't even recorded sometimes. You know, it's just like... Well, we record, you know, each show, we've probably got about 20, 30 hours of footage to go through to find, find the best bits. And there's bits that don't get in for various reasons. Ob you know, obviously time. It, we can only do like 48 minutes. Um, but uh, there's really interesting bits in it as well. There's, there's one bit where Carl goes to Africa. And, um, we send him to the slums and, uh, he helps a guy build a hut and he does a bit of charity work. It's sort of about charity. And Carl called me up and he was probably depressed. I mean, I've never seen him like it. I mean, it really affected him. And I was on the phone call for about 30 minutes. Um, that probably won't be in because it's a comedy show. Yeah. You know, uh, it's meant to be light entertainment. Uh, but there might be a bit of it, but Carl was worried that he was doing charity but on television. And so he was worried that people would think he's going, oh, look at me, look at me, like okay. a lot of no, because Steve, and actors do, because you know. because Steve sent me there to say, oh, this, you know, you'll feel great after doing it, but I was only doing it because I'm being, I'm being paid. <laughs> it's a job. Yeah. And I wouldn't be out in Africa building a hut if it wasn't for this programme. So in a way, it's a false thing. So I'm sort of thinking, I come across a bit harsh, I reckon, 
when I'm sort of there doing it, but it's part of it is the thing of, well, I'm doing it because it's all been set up. I just, I can't wait for the rest of the series. I've seen the first one. It's ridiculous. I think it, I think it's got, it's got it's more It's better, isn't it? It looks better. I think it's better. I like, well, I like- he has to do more stuff because the first one, there was sort of a restriction because he was going to do one thing and one thing only and we found sort of funny things along the way, but he was sort of stuck in one place. Yeah. Either by the pyramids or, you know. Um, whereas here, he has to shoot around. So it's really fast. It's a faster show and there's lots and lots of stuff and we just do the real- you know highlights, and yeah. um, I think it's funnier than the first one. Way funnier. Uh, I, I, it is, and it, it's just we had to up it. We had to get him even more out of his comfort zone because he was starting getting used to it. Right, we'll talk some more in a second. Tie your temper. That is Wonder Man. BBC. One. Featuring Eddie Goulding, of course. So Ricky and Carl, you uh, you heard the song just then? I particularly like the um, the lyric. He's uh, in with the idiot. He's great. Um, we, uh... Can't escape that. I, um, we, we, <laughs> <laughs> I know Because that's the whole thing. About Idiot Abroad, I mean, it, it wasn't originally called that. No, it was, it was called... one of my favourite things. Carl yeah. Wilson's Seven Wonders, and, yeah. um, uh, I was in a meeting with Sky, and I came up with a much better title, An Idiot Abroad. I thought it sold the whole idea, um, it's sort of quite challenging, um, and, uh, I told Carl he was in Peru at the time, and, uh, he wasn't happy. Um, then he thought the second one was called, uh, Carl Pilkington's Bucket List. But, um, we Sky decided- Sky were going, oh, it's a brand. Yeah. Gotta stick with it. Yeah, let's stick with it, yeah. How did you, how did you it, fall yeah. for it a second time? Well, you, what can I do? It's a job in it and, uh, <laughs> do you know- they're, Carl, they're, what do you say to those people that think, um, uh, you're a, a fake character and really you're a, you're a comic genius and, um, this is all act? I, I've stopped talking to them now. It does me head in. But I mean, it's even, it's even real journalists think that you might be an act. I mean... But I don't, what I don't get with that is, and you'll know on Radio 1, mm -hmm. Lady Gaga. She's walking around in a dress made of meat, wasn't she? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yet they call him me a, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> That's what annoys me. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't, I, there's nothing that I'd see and I go, oh, I wish I didn't say that, or react like that. I uh, think right, most the, people Carl's would react. not an idiot. Carl I'm not an idiot. idiot. I it's didn't do it, well at school. No, it's all, it's, it's more to do with the fact that, that he's got that, that, you know, what you call Little Englander syndrome, where, you know, he packs, um, sliced white bread and tea bags when he goes abroad. So that was the sort of gag. Also that he, you know, um, he sort of made his mind up about the world when he was about 14 or 15, so I was, you know, we were trying to get that out of him. But Carl's not an idiot. Carl's one of the smartest, sharpest people I know, genuinely. And he's, he's got things worth a lot more than mm. just bland facts and but knowledge. Carl, I've been listening to, well, you three, you know, when, when you got Steve and you were doing the show years and years ago when we first started, I was listening to it and I, I was hooked on it and had been you know, through the podcast and everything, but actually some of the stuff you used to say was quite profound in a weird way. Because he's got no filter, he hasn't got a pretentious bone in his body and he says exactly what he thinks and that's what's fascinating. And he changes his mind and he's really, I think he's really self-educated, I think he's educated himself, you know. I mean, is it even, I mean, Shakespeare made up words and Carl's made up a few, haven't you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he did. That's Foodage. all he did, isn't it? You made up, you know, foodage. 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 Griffage. Mainly putting A, G, E on the end of stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah. Making up words is easy. It's remembering other people's words, isn't it? That's hard. Yeah. What advice would you give to kids at school now? What, do you, what would you say? I, d I don't know anymore. I mean, like I say, I feel a bit out of me depth there today in Radio 1. It's, you know, I'm <laughs> He said he was uh, glad he was bald today because he saw a few haircuts that looked weird. Honestly, it's like being in total recall. <laughs> do you know like how that, that, that was a future? And suddenly it's like, I swear, Radio 1, you come in, you go downstairs and it's like you enter a different world in here. You go into the basement and there's all these people coming out of the dark alleys and stuff, mad haircuts, jeans round their ankles, don't bother putting pants on, if you're not gonna pull them up, don't wear them, cos they're not doing the job. If you've got to bend down to get your keys out of your pocket, <laughs> what is the point? <laughs> it's just different. I, I, honestly, I felt, you've made, this morning when I got up, uh. girlfriend said, you're 39 today, how are you feeling? It's just the same. Coming she in here. She gives him all the information every day. Yeah. Honestly. Says, Today is Friday. And you're Where 39. Where am I? You're Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I feel- Thank you. I feel well old today yeah. now. Yeah. What was- You've what? always been old though, Carl. No, and I have, and I've yeah. been happy with it. Yeah. My mum said I was an old baby. <laughs> she 
did <laughs> because it wasn't like one of your scientific theories. No, she said. She said I've just I never sort of laughed or anything as a baby. I had a frown on my face and I looked old. I look like a testicle. <laughs> I don't know if that's allowed, <laughs> but that is scientific. Allowed. It's a medical right. term. Right, so just a wrinkle. Chill out. I hate this thing about oh, they don't complain. What if they do complain? Listen, but there's, lo- there's not worse allowed, things though. happening out of the window. But 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 the thing is, I just worried a lot. So I've got a wrinkly head. I mean, look, if I, if I sort of do that, mm. I'm not that worried at the moment. But look at the wrinkle on it, and that's yeah. I've always looked old. You look like an old testicle. So I've sort. That's all right as well. Yeah, it's so, fine. What, so, was, what was the 25 year old Carl like then? <laughs> What, what what did you do? What was your twenty five? What music were you into? What sli- a slightly hairier testicle. Hang on a minute. Let if me you just say a word. Use it. Hang on a minute. Let's. Uh... <laughs> he nearly laughed. Then twenty five. We got that on webcam. <laughs> twenty five years old. I can't remember. No. Is that what you are now? Twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Uh, once, right? We were talking about what's the um, uh, oldest memory, and I was saying, oh, I can remember my fourth birthday. And uh, uh, I was going, no. He says, I can't remember. Maybe. Six or seven? And I went, no, you can remember back to like four. He went, my mum and dad don't even remember me back then. What does that mean? Because you haven't done anything at that age, you're just this thing that's there. (laughs) Oh, it comes Carl. Who's Carl? He's our new baby testicle. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's been a pleasure having you both on, as ever. <laughs> Carl, nice to see you again, what do you say to those people that you're not a, um, a fake character, um, you are in fact a true idiot? Uh, let's, no, I think we should just go with the fact that, they, they, some people have said that I'm an actor called Graham. So Graham. it might be easy just to go with that. Yeah. Just, if you just say thanks for coming in, Graham, yeah. Yeah. Uh, pff, and call it a day, because I'm sick of having the argument, it does me head in. Well, Graham's new show is on Sky One tonight at nine. Nine o'clock. And I've seen the first episode, and it is brilliant. Thanks a lot. I, Thanks. Wanna, I just want to say, Amazon. people watch it tonight. The one thing that you'll love, I think, most is is land diving. That's oh, what I'm oh, land diving. Oh, there's a bit where Carl's genuinely happy for mm-hmm. a few seconds. Yeah. And again, it's it's alien to me. He's so happy and proud of himself. It warms the cockles of my heart. And you can say cockles. Thank you both for coming in. It's a pleasure. And good luck Cheers. with the series. And Ricky, I'll see you right. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Hello there. Pilkington. Steve, you got any other toilet related <laughs> anecdotes? Rick, my life is just full of toilet trauma. Yeah. And I, Carl, you may not realise this, but uh, a while back I used to host, this is bizarre, I used to host a radio show on the BBC World Service, right? Now, you, if you want someone who's, got, who's the voice of integrity, the voice of intelligence, the voice of a nation, you're going to come to me. That's yeah. obvious. And I was broadcasting to, and they've got listeners of something like 50, 60 million people around the world. It's mental, the listenership of the World Service. And I used to host this show with someone It's a big else. place, Steve. The world? Yeah. You're absolutely right. And uh, anyway, so I had to, I had to be into uh, Bush House, where they broadcast from, 10 o'clock every Friday morning to broadcast around the world to 50 million people, right? And one week, uh, I went to the toilet in my house, right? Everyone had left. I got there a bit late. I just got up a bit late. Already against me. The clock was already against me. Had to be there at 10 o'clock, broadcast around the world. And we've got two toilets in our house, downstairs one, right? And the door had already been a bit dodgy. It was one of those doors where you had to give it a bit of a kick because you went in. It was, getting a bit, it was getting a bit tight. I don't know what the w- wood was expanding or something. You know, I'm in there. And same thing again happens. No toilet paper. I think, oh, God, I'm going to have to somehow kind of make it up. Why don't you check first? I normally do, Rick. I normally do. It's just on a certain occasions when I'm bleary-eyed or something, I just, I forget. Or occasionally I forget. Normally I do check. Right. And um, you've got to bear in mind that it's not like this is happening every week. This is over the course of many years that sure. these incidents have acc- accumulated. So um, You've condensed uh, them. For the purposes of this anecdote. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And, sure. um... Great. You're, you're, you're just brilliant. To keep the, keeping the pace up of an anecdote there, Rick, you've just drawn in... I don't know where I am now. Anyway, oh, oh, no, I know where I am. I'm trapped in a toilet oh, with no God. toilet paper. Yeah. That's where I am. And I'm thinking maybe I'd peel off some of the wallpaper, you know, things like that. But there's nothing I can do. I've got to go upstairs. Well, exactly, but I'm going to have to go upstairs and find Toilet a paper? Was there any? <laughs> there wasn't. There wasn't? All right. I'm going to have to go upstairs and maybe find a notepad or something like that. Oh. And uh, so I try the door, right? The door's wedged, and I'm pulling on the door, and I can't get the door open. It's just like it won't come open. And it's already... And I knew it was going to come to this at some point. Like, this is like... The clock's ticking. I'm trying to pull the door open. Try to run my ankles again. And I'm thinking, well, what I could do is I could open the window, I suppose, and like try and climb out, but... Not really, because I got the trousers on the ankles. And that's or if it was problem. raining, just stick your ass <laughs> out, two birds with one stone. Sadly, it was a beautiful day, Rick. It's, I call it the World Bee Day. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, um, 
so what I'm thinking is, well, wonder. I've got my mobile phone in there, luckily, because it's in my pocket. I'm thinking, well, maybe I can phone. I would seriously Kleenex. Think, maybe I'll phone <laughs> the fire brigade. By this point, I and mean, it just dried. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hadn't. It was. Hold it was, on. Was that little puppy not around? Because no. sometimes you can call that. It's got a little bit wrapped round it. Listen. It's or just use the puppy issue. itself. There's 50 million people around the world going to yeah. hear my voice in like yeah. 30 minutes. Exactly. And Where's Steve? He's not locked in a toilet again, is he? <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. So, um, so, so I'm thinking about phoning the fire brigade, and I'm thinking, sure. like, if I do that, it's gonna, you know it's going to be the first call that goes straight on the speakerphone yeah. for like the entire fire brigade service everywhere. With a butch hero carrying you down over his shoulders with your trousers around your ankles. <laughs> exactly. Can I just not pull him up? No. You've got to be learned a total lesson. Yeah. But I imagine the idea of a friend up and going, uh, hello there, I'm, uh, yeah, a bit of, I'm trapped in a room in my house. Oh yeah, which one is it? Oh, it's I don't need to small. know. It's quite <laughs> small. Is it? Yeah. yeah. It's not the toilet, is it? Because we don't want to come up and rescue someone who, who's trapped in the toilet. Which no. service do you require? <laughs> Paper. <laughs> so, um, so I, I think I can't find the fire brigade, the clock's ticking. So then I think, I think one of my housemates is still in the house, but still asleep. So I phone the house number, right, phone rings and rings and rings for ages. And eventually, he answers the phone, <laughs> right? Gets out of bed, answers the phone, yeah. Hi, it's Steve. All right, what's wrong? Oh, I'm what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> All right, yeah. Oh, I didn't wait. I don't know. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just... In the toilet. I'm just downstairs in the toilet. Oh, yeah, what are you right. doing? Oh, I'm well, I've finished what I'm... <laughs> Have you got any toilet paper? Any bog roll? Yeah. So he had to um, kind of scrape together a few bits of paper, you know, and sort of tin foil or whatever he could find yeah. in the house. A so cactus. Come down oh, no. Pass it th- underneath the door. Right, and, now I, and then he, I said, "Can you move away from the door while I? Because I don't want you to hear me as I'm, you know, wiping the." And so you he didn't did say that. Yeah, well, I didn't want him to. You know, that's what. That's what, what sorry, what? what that's you, embarrassing. What were you yeah, wiping yes. with? Not tumbleweed. What do you mean? What no, noise? I know what you mean. Yeah. No, exactly. Right. So um, so then I say, right, can you smash? Why was he hovering? <laughs> Why didn't he want to walk away? <laughs> Will you keep your what was it <laughs> outside with a glass to his ear? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, there was there was there was a window in the door, but it was frosted glass. Right. You could just see my my semi naked body moving around, and um, so eventually I said to him, look, listen, I'm going to need you to sort of kick the door in. He said, well, I don't want to kick the door in because you're going to have to pay for it, aren't we? I go, yeah, but I got to go to the World Service. I got, well, yeah. And he was a lovely man. He's the weakest man. You've ever you've ever come across. It's like you if there's one person you don't want to have to throw their body weight against the door, it was him. It's like he'll snap before the door will. So he's smashing against. This the door. sounds like a fetish to me, though. He went in there and there you were naked with lots of toilet paper, and you go, oh, you've broken the door down, and there I am. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Oh, you've rumbled me, Rick. <laughs> I wish I'd not told that embarrassing story on the radio. Like it wasn't embarrassing enough, you just got to make it slightly more seedy. <laughs> oh, so did he? Did, did he get it? Down? He did it, yeah. And I got to the World Service with like minutes to spare. Oh. And uh, interestingly, I told that story to 50 million people around the world. You're joking. Yeah. Did they understand? I what, think what, so. What, I mean, is that a bit of a problem when you're on the World Service, like thinking of things that everyone can understand? Yes. Because you can't. It's a bit like when talking yeah. to you. Carl. Yeah, exactly, Carl. I think you're on thin ice there, <laughs> worrying about people understanding what you're saying. No, but you can't talk about stuff that's on the telly and that because some people say, well, "We haven't even got a telly here." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're listening to XFM 104.9. Play a record. Nirvana, all apologies on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, Steve, I met up with. I know it's forbidden, usually. Mm, I don't know why uh, Let me just expla- explain to the uh, listener. Um, me and Steve have got a little bit of a pact. We're not allowed to talk to Carl during the week because he comes out with too much dynamite and we want it to be fresh and it's, it's just unfair. And if he sees us laughing, he, he clams up a little bit because he, he knows something's wrong with his head. So, um, I was in a pub, and uh, Carl called, he returned a call, I'd called you earlier, and I said, oh, I'm just across the road, right, come over, and uh, he came over, and we had a conversation, and uh, I kept saying, no, save it, and I can't remember half the things he was saying, but I do remember one thing he said, he said that the human eye never grows, it's the, he, said, he said, unlike your ears and nose that keeps growing all your life, he says the human eye never grows. Now, there's a little bit of... He says, now you look at a baby, it's got big eyes. It's got the same size eyes as it will have. When, when, when a baby's never... born, everyone always goes, oh, look at its eyes, don't they? Because that's, like, the main feature. Yes. They're quite big. They <laughs> don't grow. They don't get any smaller. They stay the same size. 
What you mean? Once you become an adult, you've the same size no. eyes. No. As soon as you come out of the womb, <laughs> your eyes, the size they are as a little baby, they stay the same size. And so you die. Sockets. And I said, I pointed out to him, right? You know, I said, if that was true, Steve Merchant, when he was a baby, with these eyes he's got now, would look like a hammerhead shark. All right, calm down. <laughs> you don't want to go <laughs> lay into the eyes. Do you know what I mean? Just to prove my point. I didn't laugh. Good. When he said that. Respect. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No. Imagine. I've got the eyes of the windows of the soul, <laughs> and mine are that happen to be enormous plate glass windows. windows. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but no, nevertheless, they're beautiful. But, but, many people but, find them beautiful. Yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah, many people do. Um, yeah. But uh, do you know they don't have kneecaps either? My eyes or what? Ba babies. <laughs> when they're born, they, do, they don't get kneecaps until they're about two. <laughs> they don't get knee. Is that true? Yeah. And also, uh, yeah, it's about true, it that's, but it's isn't it like a isn't it a little bone? In, it's part of the. the well, no, but all the, 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 the you've got lots more, lot more bones when you're born. Than yeah, you've got three hundred, three hundred when you're born, then two hundred and five when you're an adult. Yeah, they all fuse, don't they? Do they? The head's got to be all soft to come out. Right. Um, as we said earlier, you know. I would know. I'm a shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So God. what did you say when he said about my eyes being huge? <laughs> okay, get off said, it. That, that, so that isn't nice, considering yeah. he's not here. Yeah, so I wait until he's here when I slug him off. Yeah, fair one. No, nice one, Carl. You're an honourable man. <laughs> oh, well, there's... I know, you see, the thing is, right, that made me think that it might be a little bit of truth in this. There is as well, is that... the, the ear thing. <laughs> Have you seen that with old That's men true, who yeah. have really long ears? Yeah. And big noses. Yeah. yeah you mean do, they, do they eat buns and uh, walk around in the jungle, these, these old men? You mean that the ears and the nose carry on growing? Yeah, yeah they do, that's true. That's true, it's cartilage. Yeah, but not like, it's not like sort of Pinocchio. No, no, after you're dead. You leave a body lying around, he's got a huge elephant really? type ears. Really? left him long enough? Four foot nose, that's Incredible. what, yeah. Um, that's no, remarkable. But, but, you see, the, it's about the focal um, uh, length in, in your eye, you see, because it's, it's like a big lens. So it would make sense that, that they couldn't change that much. Because hmm. um, an owl, do you know why an owl turns its head round? Sort of like 180 degrees. No. Because it, it can't move its eyes. Because the eyes take up the whole... It's the biggest eye in the animal kingdom. The eyes take up the whole of its skull. Really? That, yeah. Yeah, and it has to move its... Yeah. Has so it got a brain in there as well? It's got a brain in there, yeah, above the eye. Yeah. When I say the whole of the skull... I'm, Quite, yeah. There's yeah. also some space for the brain. What I meant is the the, the, the two diameters of the eye is the, is the diameter of the You've lost the me there with diameters and... You didn't like maths, did you? No, don't like maths. Never understood it. Couldn't yeah. get to grips with maths. I don't know about you, Carl. Did you do maths, Carl? <laughs> now, how did you do in your exams on the maths? <laughs> did you do that? Was your, I bet yours was rather like my theory, which is why do you need to figure it all out when you've got a calculator? Exactly. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. You're and right. I agree. Well, let's play a record, and afterwards I'm going to be testing you on your homework this week, Carl. Mm. Um, could we do uh, White Van Man first? We could do... Oh, just to... You no, know, they've got no, to know what, to what they're people. dealing with, yeah. Um, Carl's homework was to read all about... Um, as you know, Shay Guevara. Absolutely. Uh, uh, last week, he did well on Rasputin, didn't he? Did very well on Rasputin. Yeah, uh, and perhaps with flying marks there. Uh, so, uh, um, let's let's have a bit of Wu Tang, shall we? Then let's have White yeah. Van Carl. Oh. Yeah. White Van Carl. No. Yeah. Don't erase none of that good shit. Yeah. Wu Tang Clan, they see. XFM 104.9, and this is with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Now, I just. Uh, Remind me of someone else, um, Carl's in the week. I know it's forbidden to talk to him, but we're, we're, I'll tell you this. He was talking, he was very excited about the Friends Reunited. He was a bit nervous at first, wasn't he, last week? But he was really getting into it. Um, and uh, in the pub he was talking to about those people. He said, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd never go on a reunion, though. He said, I'd never, never do that. What, a school what? reunion? Yeah, and he, said, he wouldn't want to see anyone. And I went, well, I, I said, I said, wouldn't you want to see those two lads with the big heads and the webbed hands? Oh, yeah, these were... People you went to school with, weren't they? Yeah. Well, I didn't knock about with them. They were in the class. What were they called? Ah, uh, freaks. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, he said, no, I wouldn't want to see them. He said, because what could you say? Oh, you haven't changed much. Right. Mm. And he went, he said, and they wouldn't go anyway, would they? I said, why? He went, well, they didn't have any friends. Right. And I said, well, weren't they friends with each other? And he went, no. That would have been too obvious. <laughs> like, they passed each <laughs> and went, No. <laughs> I know it's tempting, but let's not. Everyone would think that's just what we were going to do. <laughs> let's yeah. not do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. they didn't even hang around with each other. No. See, I must say, in my in my head, I've got something like it's like a some sort of extra thing from Blake Seven that they're like some sort of you know lagoon monster, but they just had slightly oversized heads, did they? See, does your head grow? Your hmm. eyes don't. Does your head? Because maybe they've got to a point now that it's all sort of caught up with each other. <laughs> 
God. Why at the time the, the eyes were very small and the head was huge. Uh, just a very big head. And yeah. The, I mean, the fingers aren't going to change, you know, that's not... They had not webbed funny. fingers? It was like the penguin in Batman. <laughs> really? Are you sure? No, honestly. Are you sure they weren't wearing mittens? No, seriously. <laughs> yeah, they were, it wasn't home economics. They weren't getting some out of the oven, a very hot dish, were they? Every time you saw them. But why were there two, but they weren't related and they weren't friends? I don't know, I suppose it's like asthma and that, innit? Some kids have it. And, and it just was a coincidence. Yeah, but asthma's quite a common thing. Webbed hands, Carl. Yeah. I don't know, you don't think of it, do you, when you're a kid? You just sort of... Oh, when, yeah, you, the... when you first see them... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there goes the frog, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Carl, look, let's have, um, <laughs> let's have a little quick session of White Van Man. For those that don't listen to the show regularly, uh, The Sun, as you may know, has a, a section called White Van Man where uh, a member of the public gets asked their opinions on the uh, week's big uh, political and social hot potatoes. Carl, we just thought uh, it would be fun if you answered some of the uh, questions. It's not so much questions, it's just your views, really, on these big, these big news stories. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics. and for he. What? He was, a ski, he was a skier, right. and he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what, I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? Because <laughs> all you do is balance. But imagine, it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like, going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you have yeah, to... It's not, it's not going to help you, is No, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it, with skiing? Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be you... like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not, it's not going <laughs> to help them. You, yeah, sit, you sit there and you go with the flow. Yeah. And you could try I, could, and I, could I say? Could I say the, the, the drugs Apparently he was taking? That's his defence. Probably the, it, it wasn't. It probably wasn't jacking up H or you know dropping a few E's or getting stoned. He was probably taking more sort of uh, you know, performance enhancing drugs as opposed to him just like scoring some shit around the corner but, from someone, getting off his tits and jumping in a toboggan. <laughs> Doesn't mean that, yeah. does it? He wasn't, yeah, he wasn't off his nut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have, you have, uh, you tested you, you're pissed out of your head. But why doesn't he just say, don't be stupid, why would I do that? It's not going to help me out. But it is, isn't it? Because uh, performance enhancing drugs know, do. Wait a minute, Steve, wait a minute, Carl. Right, look at this way. Okay, look at me, yeah. I've got, have I got his attention? Yeah, the, 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 the light's glinting off your ring there. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. You're okay, right, no, keep concentrating. Right. Some athletes, you're aware they take drugs, that's to build up swimmers muscle. Swimmers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, swimmers. Runners. Example, runners, yeah. No, not only do they help build muscle, right, but they, they can actually, you know, give them a boost performance while yeah. they're sort of like steroids and all, all this sort of stuff, right? So that's the sort of thing we're talking about, okay? Right, so again... He, was, he wasn't on a bomb before... You? What? Why would that help you when you... All you've got to do is balance on skis. <laughs> not uh, when you're at the Olympic level. Yeah. There's a <laughs> lot to do with, you know, your body and no, your it's legs. it's practice, isn't it? It's like, if, you, if, if you've skied for years, then you've got good balance after a bit. Oh, do you know what, Carl? Do you know what? You've made a mockery of drug taking. Well done. Yeah. Right, next one, Steve. I Fair ate enough. this bit. I ate this. Um, I don't know if you saw it. What did you make of Posh Spice's Warts and All documentary? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bit of it. What did you make of it? Uh, I mean, people are slagging him off, aren't they? Saying, you know, she's daft and that, but... Daft, <laughs> mate, you! She's... <laughs> I, I think they're all right, honestly. Yeah, You know, all right. she's all right. I mean, I think David's really a decent bloke. Sure. Um, Would you, you know? agree that he's quite a simple man? Yeah, but he's a footballer. He doesn't need to be. Do you know what I mean? It's like me. Yeah. Like you know, all right. I only got an E in history, sure. but knowing about the Tudors doesn't help me press these buttons and put the next CD on. No, sure. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So good luck to him, and he's done well out of it. And it's just yeah. jealousy. Yeah. I remember though, um, when I was, when I was back in Manchester, I was in Piccadilly train station, and he was there, right? Not as big a star as he is now. Yeah. Back then, but he was stood there, and I, I was so close to going over to him and saying. Did you go to my school? Because I recognised his face, oh, but I no. didn't know who he was. Do you know when you sort of go, sure, I went to school. It's not the one with the big head. Yeah. But I do recognise him. Then my girlfriend got off the train, and I said, I'm sure I know him. She said, yeah, it's David Beckham. And I was oh, so close to him. Oh, thank God for your girlfriend. Does she, yeah. does she get an awful lot of scrapes, does she? She <laughs> does, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, what about the fact that uh, the pension crisis sure. is going to force Britons to work into their 70s, Carl? You might have to carry on working into your 70s before you can claim a pension. I think it's a good thing. Because um, you see a lot of old people who look bored. Okay. <laughs> and I honestly think if you, you keep, if you keep your brain busy, yeah. you'll live longer. Yeah. It's only when you actually shut down, right, that that's when your body sort of dies because it, it doesn't feel it has a purpose. Yeah. It's like if you've got flu, mm. keep going to work. 
if you have a day off, you just feel worse. You'll mope about at home. Doesn't do you any good. What about where, where do you draw the line there? What if you say lose a finger? Pop into work. Um, depends if if you can't concentrate because it's painful. But right. what if you're a typist? <laughs> you're not going to type as many words, but you, you'll do more at work than you would having a day off at home. Sure. Okay. Um, Tony Blair turning trendy with his uh, Paul Smith designed naked lady shirt. I don't know if you've seen this. It's the one no. with the uh, pictures of naked ladies on the cuffs. And. You know, I mean... OK. Um, and finally... Uh, that, you see, this is what annoys me about this feature. It's just, what's that? So what? Yeah, but it's the, pres it's the Prime Minister of this country wearing a trendy shirt with naked ladies on the cuffs. All right. <laughs> OK. And uh, finally, what do you make of the fact that Top of the Pops have banned uh, Will Young singing both tracks uh, on the number one slot, and uh, consequently he wasn't on there at all, he had to show the video? The first time anyone's ever made this demand. He wants to sing both the A and uh, B side. Well, he can't. It's, it's double A, yeah. Double A side. That's well, what he wanted to. That yeah. isn't how it works, is it? Yeah, I agree, yeah. And the thing is, which one... I mean, at the end of the day, loads of people have bought it, haven't they? And it's yes, like one of yes. the best... So it doesn't really matter what it does, because people have got it. They can listen to what song they want at home. It doesn't matter about what Top of the Pops do. Yes. And it, it's just annoyed me now. I don't, it's Who's annoyed you? Th this, th just what goes on in the world. I'll tell you, you're better off not knowing. <laughs> I, I, it's better being in my little world... If that's what people are talking about on the streets and asking the white van man, do you know what I mean? You I think that? you're right, Carl. I think you're Jeez. right. Shall I, shall I play a lovely song for you? Because you're getting all stressed now, aren't you? I've not had a good day. No, I know. We tell you about it later. It's not a good day. Well, I'm going to play um, uh, a, a Neil Young track here of Harvest. It's uh, Alabama. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And this is for Carl. Athlete, West Side. I still like that one. It's a good track. Yeah, good I was track. worried that it's a bit novelty it would go off very quickly. But it's good. No, really it's, it's not bad at all. On I XFM 104.9, I'm Richard Vance with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, Steve. <laughs> well, we were talking about the news just now, and uh, there was a story I heard in the week, I think it was on the radio, and I don't know all the details, but what I heard was that a number of, I think it was Falkland, uh, maybe Gulf War, war veterans, were, I think, suing or complaining to the government because they wanted compensation for post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but it seems to me that if you're in the army and you're a soldier, a certain degree of trauma is kind of inevitable. I mean, after all, if you're any good at your job, you are going to see people getting killed. So I don't understand what the ins and outs of it are. I don't know <laughs> why. No, if anybody came back and Tony Blair met him and go, all right, well, not really, no. Go on, what's the matter? Well, if... You there was people shooting at us and everything that was all muddy. Well, calm down, don't cry. Well, I will. There was a drill sergeant just kept shouting, saying, look at you, stupid boy, where's well, this gun not clean? Well, I just cleaned the gun and it was fine and now he's telling me to clean it again. Yeah, the boots, uh, they were, they were oh, shiny. It's fine, he was well, he's got to do that, it's more disciplined. His neck was as big as his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what they, you know. I don't know what the ins and outs of it are, but, um. Uh, is it, what you got to do is make sure you know what you're going into. That's what I do. you got to check the small print. So if I was, you know, Going over to the, like, the Falklands or, you know, the Gobs, I'd put my hand up and go, will, uh, will it be horrible? I go, you hear the back, yes? Will it be horrible? <laughs> it, it will be horrible, <laughs> yes. It will be horrible. There will be shooting and lots of death and everything. I go, right, I'm not going to go. And I go, <laughs> exactly. okay then. Okay. That should be fine, yeah. Should be fine, yeah. Just like go, is anyone else scared about this? Uh, pretty much all of us. Okay then, well, we won't send anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. then. <laughs> my, um, brother, my brother went into the army, right, because, um, because he couldn't get a normal job. And my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son, you're going in the army. When was the Falklands? Was it about 80? 80 81. Right? And he joined back in, like, 81 or something. And, uh, he, he, I don't know, he was in older shot or something. Oh, yeah. And uh, he wrote back to my mum saying, uh, you know, what a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote... <laughs> well, bad to join. That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's all right. Dear Dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> Don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway. Go on. My mum called up, spoke to the sh sergeant, and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined, and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like, saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck, and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go. 
which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? Her? Why did the sergeant even entertain this? Well, it's... Pilkington, come here. Your mum's been giving me a bit of earache. Now, listen, tell her I've told you, but can you call her? Because she was really, she called me Chuck and everything. Can you call her and say you don't mind? Well, not really. Oh, please, because I've promised her I'll say you want to go. No, please, say you want to go. Why was he entertaining this phone call? Probably because he was new. What? Because he was new to the army, I suppose. Who? No, you're, I mean you're the right. sergeant. Uh, I don't know, maybe so, they do that. So what happened? Did he didn't go in the end? So he didn't go, no. You can't do it! That's got, ludicrous! I, I love it, that. Oh, we went over the top. Built no, in. I've, I've got a note. Yeah. Is this, is this really your mum? Yeah. Okay, no, this seems to be in order. Because I notice it says, um, uh, I do not want to go into the army, I don't want to go and fight, and it's crossed out and it's good, my mum says don't yeah. go. Now, you didn't write this yourself. No, no, my mum wrote this. Okay, you definitely wrote this yourself. You're, you're, you're going to have to do, um, fill envelopes. No, I'm, I'm sure if, if he was needed he would have had to go, but I think they made a bit of a special effort. They sort of said, oh. Well, it wasn't conscription anyway. Oh, no, I was But were the, the other army, soldiers going around just going, <laughs> Bilkington! <laughs> no, he ended up being a mechanic in there, and he got kicked out for, um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> What? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest made that Honest to God. That, and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, your, your brother's a genius. I love this. I love this. First of all, um, he gets a call from his mum, going, let him up. He goes, oh, God. Then he goes, uh, uh, where is, where's Pilkington? His mum's on the phone. He's, where is he? Um, he's near your house, Sergeant. Near my house? Well, why is... No, no reason. Uh, well, when he comes back, when he's finished, tell him his mum called. And can he get me a packet of fags? <laughs> tell him to walk this time. Wow. This is ludicrous. The, the, so the Sergeant phoned out that he was sleeping yeah, I, with his wife? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I did, was Did your young. mum phone up and say, let him off? <laughs> <laughs> no, let him off this time. Can he... T yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fantastic. But he misses it. I mean, I haven't seen him for about 11 years. But ever since he came out, he's just kept getting into trouble and that. And the army, you know, people slag it off. But I think if you're a certain type of person, it's, it's good for it you. It didn't straight him either. How <laughs> did it? No. He was going down the shops in a tank. He was shagging someone. No, but he was, it's yeah. really weird. It's like back then, he was like a proper adult. And he had a house and he collected crystal with his wife and that. <laughs> and now, he hasn't got any of that. Has he got the wife? No. Has he got the crystal? Don't think he has. And he I, hasn't I, got I, the house. Seriously, I haven't seen him for about 11 or 12 years. Oh, so so it always Carl's stories always start off nice and funny, and then they just leave me empty and slightly yeah. depressed. I don't know whether to hug him or shoot him, put him <laughs> out of his misery. Can we take Carl to the... Uh, phone in if you think I should take Carl to the vet and have him put down. Because it's just too stressful. <laughs> <laughs> Main offender, XFM 104.9. Well, it's that time in the show where I test Carl on his uh, homework. Yeah, for the week. History, the re education of Carl Pilkington. As you know, we found out last week that he'd uh, taken one GCSE and he'd got an E, and it was history. Do you know, Steve, I haven't told you this. Went shopping on Sunday, buy some new jeans. I was in a shop, saw an old lad who I hadn't seen for about two and a half years. Went, you alright, mate? How are you doing? First thing you said. Sorry to hear about your exam results. Oh, <laughs> God. Just, had he listened to the show, or someone had yeah, just told him? Yeah, he was on a train listening to it on a way to a football match or something. He knew that you were on the show, did he? He was yeah. regularly listening. First thing you said. Wow. So sorry about your exam results. Haven't people have been coming up to you in the station going, "You yeah, right? Do you want to talk about it?" Or God. I know. Well, well, you did take it pretty badly. For a 29-year-old man. Just a bit of a shock, because it annoyed me that... I it wasn't a shock. You no, knew you, you hadn't got any. No, I thought I'd have got a bit more than that. I wasn't expecting, you know... But you, weren't, you didn't even think you took history, so that must have been a bonus. Yeah, that's what my girlfriend said. Yeah. So, well, but didn't yes she say something quite philosophical, which was like, you know, you didn't even have any this morning? Yeah, she said yesterday, you know, you, you didn't have anything <laughs> yeah. Yeah. today. Exactly. Which was good. Yeah. Mm. But anyway... Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on, uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, I've got lots of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide, those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, the life and times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history, 
last week you read about Rasputin, he wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week... This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's Thick, so you're writing or something. Um, but, okay, Shark Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Che is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> right, um... Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Shay. Right. It was something else and Shay means buddy okay. in, uh, wherever he's, from, uh, Argentina. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, yeah. that's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born and he was, uh... By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now. This is all out of his own head. This is just... not pre-planned notes. No, this is, this is, I mean, it's I know it sounds it. written, but he's just yeah. Right, here we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um, he, he had bad asthma as a kid. Right. Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then, and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so, did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was, that was something I picked up early yeah. in yeah. the story. Uh, he had asthma, yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli- he wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yeah. what's going on yeah. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off yeah. and went to travel South America with his mate okay. on a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world and he thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. Yeah. You know, I, I could sure. do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he, um, he said, what I'm going to do is uh, join a gang right. that sort of uh, is against the, uh, like the, like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. Am I right so far? Yeah. You're doing very well. Right. And and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. Right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And um, so uh, she said like this is this is uh, I think his real name was Eng- Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto. He does medicine. Should have him in our in our sort of army. Yeah. So when there's injuries and that, he can he can make people better. Yeah. So he said, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, no, no. no, no sure, sure, sure. sure. You're, 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 you're condensing it's this. Not, it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels like it. <laughs> You see, this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously, well, he made his name as part of the uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? About, uh, no, I don't. Okay. And, uh, obviously, so, uh, he, he was a uh, big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, where, where, in which country was he, um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right? The, guy, the guys there with the gun, huh. and he he wasn't scared. He didn't. He wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, he said, "Go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man." Yeah. He said, yeah. And they shot him. And yeah. did did it tell you what happened to him after that? His dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a. In a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. The... Uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to Ch- to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was. Yeah, even but that more wouldn't work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves... What, with different parts of his body? Well, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh, God. His head over there. Thanks for sure. what you're doing. <laughs> you tease him, Jesus. Yeah. No, oh, true. so, so, all, so, in all, all so in all... So, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. 
um, well worth knowing about, and um, good bloke, did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah, but, um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log. And someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of... People can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing something? Well, this, no, this it? was the thing. Is you complaining about it. The best one... I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, the best one... My favourite my favorite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, which but there's lots of that. It's things like, Esther was superb. Yeah. Woman. <laughs> Call yeah. one. Woman called. There yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike T-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that. Like yeah. But anyway, this was this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a T-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see uh, a presenter wearing uh, Che Guevara's face on a T-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that, who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl. Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, you've been championing the work of uh, Communist Revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone. <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up for Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was even brilliant. Right, but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us, you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remembered that Carl, information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Can I, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What What was the significance of that last date? Why did he? What What was the that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. Which I'm interested in. So this, yeah. this will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> it might, it might not be covered in the Hitler um, biography, the Anderson shelter, but just I mean... check if there is a special Anderson uh, <laughs> chapter, Anderson <laughs> shelter chapter. <laughs> yeah, I'll look forward to this. Yeah, It'll be, yeah. Be interesting. Uh, powdered egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're going to play a hip hop. Yeah, we're it's time for a hip hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World? Is that yep. what, the whole world? Anyway, this is a track uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits. And uh, this is a good one. It's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. From their greatest hits album, uh, that's Outcast, and a track called Rosa Parks. Like it, like it. Yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Now, we just had a call uh, from someone, uh, impressed by Carl. And Carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a PhD on Che Guevara. So in theory, whatever subject he chose, in theory, he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field. Now, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, what's your name? My name's David. David, now, you, now where did you do your PhD? Did at UCL. Did at UCL, mild, mild college. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? And I his, thought he did really, really well. The only thing, I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although <laughs> you presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, you know vaguely uh, intelligent, and then say, did you know about baby's eyes don't grow? Um, any, uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts, anything he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well, and uh, I, I, think, I think he should be congratulated. What's it, no, because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history. And well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, why does anyone care about history? Why is it important? What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. Well he, well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. So he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think, like, why Rage Against the Machine have him on, on their T-shirts? Good point, oh. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I, th I don't know. Maybe that's... That was a design of the T-shirt. Maybe they wanted another T-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald any, McDonald. But didn't have any in. <laughs> sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there. Then. <laughs> well, thanks very much, um, Dave. Just to, before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? 
Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know, well, hopefully one day busy. you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. Do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. I might have an MA in Carl Pilkington. Thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, bye. bye. That's good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. To really? Me. Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, they, you have always, to be in the same room. They were really. just saying, "Who are you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but M Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, let's sure. not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not getting not, not Matty Matthews, said, not, not Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That, she, what'd she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer? She said that to me, Mum and Dad. On, really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> what is, and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> with a pinch of salt. REM with Orange Crush on XFM 104.9. Well, nearly through, only 20 minutes to go. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve and Carl. Carl, what did you point? What did you point to me then? Just then reminded me. Go on. O Orange Crush. Do you know we were talking the other night about contraceptives? Uh, no, you said to me, uh, I've got to do lots of homework. You look up how they used in the olden days how they used to use elephant dung as a contraceptive. <laughs> and I went, what? And he went, no, look at oh, you make you give me those things. I said, I don't know, was it they put, when you're running round with dung on the end of your knob, no woman really wants to go near it. Is that how it worked? And he went, come on, you give me things to do. If you've just written a PhD on how to use elephant dung as a contraceptive, please get in touch. And I'll out. give the number in a minute. It's not elephant, it was crocodile. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? But, um, yeah, orange Sorry, crush. no, you can't, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. What? Back. <laughs> What do you mean? It was crocodile dung. What, how did they use crocodile dung as a contraceptive? I don't know. Right, go on, Orange Crush, yeah. So Orange Crush, um, what it was, I, t I was trying to look up that, that thing about, um, crocodile stuff, mm. using it, and, um, I came up with another one saying that they used to use a lemon, sort of shaped, right, and the, um, put it, put it on, and the citric, so the um, citric acid, citric acid in it kill the sperm. would kill the sperm. Right. So they would, sorry, they would wear the lemon on the end of the knob. Was that erotic? <laughs> it worked. Listen, I'll try anything, Carl, mate. That <laughs> yeah, works. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. the ladies like that, I mean, does it ha could it be anything? Could it be like a, you know, a melon? Kumquat? Yeah, maybe. In my, but in my case. What's those hairy ones? Yeah. Anyway, that uh, just reminded me when it, orange, orange crush. Well, thanks very much for that, Carl. It's a... Uh, and that, I didn't even ask him to. No, no, no. no, no, that. no. Just... So Orange Crush reminded you of the lemon contraceptive. Mm. Okay. Johnny Good. Johnny you could good. use it as a little lemon squeezer, couldn't you? It could be like a novelty lemon squeezer. You just stand in the kitchen, <laughs> and then when someone wants to just come along and go yeah. <laughs> on the end of your. Did yeah. you make this uh, lemonade yourself? Uh, yes, I, I did. did. It tastes funny. <laughs> it tastes funny. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Anyway. Do, do you? Would you? Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? Is that a concern for you? Do you think? No, not not a problem for you. Well, not if they're not if they're small and humble. I would. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what fingers crossed. If they were small uh, and humble, then I'd I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God. But I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous and with like, like quite rocky with snow on top. <laughs> exactly. Then I'd go. Hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's who has who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. Shakira. It's a lyric that's taking the nation by storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another. It's very much like. It sounds a bit like Men at Work, don't Yeah, it's got the pan pipe. Is this What's Its Kid? Who? Um. Julio Inglesius. No, it's Shakira. Consequently, the word Shakira there being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently, big Latin American star. Yeah. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, sí, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. <laughs> Definitely. And she, a number of times she's woken up and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little, a little Sherpa. She goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just trying oh. to climb this map. Look again. Oh, sorry, love. Oh, she's hit, I didn't realise. Oh, she's hit, we thought we were in... I can't hey, believe you it. I can't. Well, can we camp? Here? You can't camp on my tits for the night. No. Well, why are you climbing them? Well, I just got Cause they confused. were there. 
Well, they're small and humble. Were you mental? <laughs> look at Carl. I love that look at Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, when you so, uh, uh, you go t- t- to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when, like, a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing um, Ash, just the, our producers uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing him through the VC. He's not a midget, we should make that. No, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. <laughs> yeah, do you go up to people? Do you go up to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah, well, tell what this story. Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? My dad, used, he had loads of jobs, mm. which he did back then. They don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't, they don't <laughs> have do loads of, jobs? of stuff. Sure. But, um, it, one, at one point, he had a black cab, and I, I used to, uh, used to go with him. He used to get, a, like, a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab. Yeah. And sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And, um... <laughs> Anyway, we got this call, and uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, "Oh, you've, you've got uh, you've got your son with you, haven't you?" So he said, "Yeah." So it's just like you know, we've got a pick up at uh, number eleven Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, "All right." And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow, the Elephant Woman. Yeah, it looked. Like- <laughs> It, it, uh, it, it, like- it was really uh, strange because I was in the front of the cab, and um, when you're a kid. You- if you if something locks on you you're a bit scared of it aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, look, be all right. And we're we're driving towards just, her. Look, oh, don't worry, son. I've got loads of buns. And just to I think I'll just throw one down the street if it. If you're you're, run you're after being it. mean, right? I am a little bit. Yeah. So how old were you? Eighteen? No, I was I was about twelve or sure. something like that. Eleven, twelve. Hmm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like she she, she was holding like a bag of spuds on her shoulder for a snack. <laughs> right. <laughs> And her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. Well, <laughs> she got in the back, and I, I had like the mirror, the dri- driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having, having a look, trying to work out. And I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that. It was that weird. <laughs> oh God. So I'm not sure you're from. Manchester. I think you're from like Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around. The Lord of the Rings. They've the, got like the claws of a lobster and the and the head of a toad. Yeah. And you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what what this sort of what is this, this is not place? The place you grew up. This is yeah. Mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go, look, symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? And because again, do you know I've said to you before? Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good-looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the money. fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your head yeah. to grow. No, but if... if she like... must have been really stressed to have a head like <laughs> Yeah, a yeah. She what, was, pretty, yeah, was she an accountant or something? Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what, but what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, in? by the she, way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. I think not. <laughs> she, was, she was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Seriously, honest to God. On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? She's not she an, animal. an animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she You was. know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> That's, look, so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? <laughs> what, is to find true? a husband? Is, it... <laughs> <laughs> is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey, because it must be so, really bad for of you. Of course it but is. Carl, 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 Carl I we have... I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. I was going on about that, to think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to <laughs> think... But look, you're saying you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The I think you're right. Like, you just, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr- father where to drive it? Did Probably she ever get another note? Did she point with her nose? <laughs> yeah. Right. This has got silly. Pick your songs. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village, a little small village. Right. Um, just and heading out of the way. All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. 
<laughs> and, uh, and now... <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please enter at your peril. Shit, give me a shiny shilling. Wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm going to play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late. We've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here. And this is I Need Direction. Teenage Fan Club. Oh, they're a good band. They are they? a good band. XFM 104.9. Um, so, well, we're, we're nearly there. So, will your girlfriend be proud of you now? You performed a PhD graduate there. It's a bit annoying because she's not in London today. She's in Sunderland or something, or Newcastle. Right. Working. So, she won't know what the your greatest triumph. She, she, she saw last week's and you got an E in history, and now this week you, cu you come through yeah. with some great praise that Miss, Mrs. Matthews never you know, laid upon Even you, did she? At, well. No, just said you won't be a high flyer. Eh? You've shown them, haven't you? You never know. I mean, I had mates who, um, mm -hmm. like, you know, my mate Colin Makin, who sure. did the disco with me. Pilkins making music, yeah. Pilkins making music. Yeah. He was dead brainy. I don't, I don't think he's up to much these days. Sure. Just, you just, can't plan it. Yeah. Just goes yeah. to show. Well, I mean, you can do a certain amount of planning. You can do. I mean, driving a tank down to the shops with some fags <laughs> yeah. never going to mean you're a high flyer. You know? And that 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 woman uh, who you picked up in your black cab, she's in a circus now, and yeah, she can happy. fly, which is good. Oh, I'm confusing that with a film. You went to see a film this week, didn't you? Mm. What, what did you see? see? Um, the um, Monsters Inc. Oh did yeah. Did you have a little argument? What was the argument about? Did you have an argument with your girlfriend or something? Because about well, the history thing took over last weekend. To be honest, when you found out my results. <laughs> that was like the talking topic of most of the weekend. And <laughs> why? What did she you say? Know, you brought it on yourself. You know, why didn't you take it serious? You know, was she annoyed or upset? Well, she just sort of said, "You can learn. Look, you, you learned Rasputin. Mm. You know, if only you did you've that. You've done that. School. You've done Rasputin. You know I mean? She said you can do it if if you're told to. She said, you know, it's only because Rick has told you to read the book that you're reading it. Mm. Does she, she think said, we're sort of like taskmasters? Does she think we bully well, you? Uh, nah, she knows it's just a laugh. Yeah. What did you did you tell your uh, parents about your? No, nope. no, never. Because they they never even questioned where my results were, so I don't want to tell them that you know I didn't get any. No. What? How did they do at school? I didn't have them back then, did they? Right. Uh, <laughs> when was that called? The, the middle, middle ages. ages. I don't know. I mean, like I say, back then it wasn't about getting results and that was it. It was just about learning trades. Mm. I mean, my dad, right? He can like put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? <laughs> he's done that first of all. Right, so, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs? Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working, what should I do? Mm. And he'll say, like... Is that an old brain surgeon? He'll yeah. say, oh, fix it. Sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc.? What yeah. did you make of it? Um, it's all right. It's, it, it is a kid's film. It, it sort of annoys Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having, like... <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away, do you think? <laughs> Was it the songs? Was it the animation? <laughs> yeah, the fluffy was little it, things yeah. that squiggled round on the screen for yeah. an hour and a half. It is annoying because, like, there's kids everywhere and kids don't watch films, do they? No. Do you know what I mean? They're messing around. I don't know why they make kids films. And you can't, to be honest, it's mental. You can't concentrate properly when mm. you've got kids, you know, Screaming, making noise training. around you and that. Yeah. So I'd say, my little review, wait until it comes out on DVD. Okay. <laughs> That would be, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Film 2002. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Ross going, well, I don't want to give it away when it comes out on DVD. Yeah. Oh. No, but not giving it away. It's just that you can't watch it properly when there's kids screaming around you. Yeah. Sure. Do you know what I mean? What are you looking forward to this week? Are you going to go and see anything? Just been talking to Ricky now, because me missus is away. I'll probably uh, get out a DVD tonight. Yep. Rounders. Oh right, okay. I thought you might like that. And if like you can get, so, but, I mean, if I can get you tickets, say in the stalls or in a box for the stage version of Midnight Express, would you be up for that? <laughs> it's on, it's on ice. I think it's, it's the final year, it, isn't it's it? It's lovely. It's Midnight Express on ice. Yeah, and it's a musical as well. They're on roller skates. Do you have any dope under your jacket? No. Yeah. It is they, well they, it's, it's, it's great. John yeah. Hurt is actually in this version as well, yeah. which is fantastic. Who played the Elephant Man? So it all comes. The universe all comes together. Have you ever seen the stage version of the Elephant Man? No. You'd love that? Yeah. Who's in that? I have seen a clip of it. Who plays him? Uh, I've, I've I think they got a real guy with actual, with elephantitis. 
Right. Yeah. What are you finishing on? Uh, let's uh, have a final song for the ladies. It's from uh, the album Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me by The Cure, and it's the beautiful catch. See Goodbye. You next week. See you next week, everybody. Bye bye. Uh, this is Strokes and uh, Last Night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we? From uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 the Mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Adge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. Was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Uh, apples and jams. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? I, I, I. JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not having yeah. a laugh at me. Is that true? Jo uh, one of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he? D is, is that true? So give us a call. What's is the number not? again, Carl? Oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. If so, I'm I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh God. If, right, say if like you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you c you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look, and it's someone famous. Yeah, or Adge Cutler. <laughs> 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 yeah, go on, what was your point? No, it's just like, not Terrifying, only yeah. it's like you've killed someone, then you look. But I mean, all, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. What that makes is, it even worse. <laughs> and what, what makes it even worse, they were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, but be... say if it was someone who's, like, really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that. It's an interesting point, though. Oh, that's your bag. No wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well... As Bono <laughs> said. Did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm There's just, a, Is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this. I'm not... I'm not ignoring... Record. This is getting a bit slop, sloppy, no, you know? No, 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 it's not, no, no. No, no it is, Rick. It's getting it? sloppy. It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week. Um... Uh, we were up for an award. Well, let yeah. me, I have to explain it to Carl, because, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Annual Awards, right? We it's never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's why yeah, that's the clue, isn't it? So, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing, and they really made an effort, and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do, and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours, before we had fun. to sit down, and, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV, radio, industry names, on-screen talent, behind the scenes people. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so it, it, the, the voice comes on and says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like straight away, it was you know, old school stuff. You want to like, thank the ladies? Because, you know, it was nothing without the ladies. All the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke? No. Nope. <laughs> just, just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we right. ate. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella, right? And he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during oh, no, grace. Can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, <laughs> and, um... Sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> You just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said, blah, 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 and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, what's happened to you? They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So, yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so, go on. <laughs> and, uh, Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, thank you, God, for... We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was going to be like a kind of cheeky gag. That's, why we, that's why we were laughing out loud. <laughs> that's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> we went anyway, and then he went, I'll take you off, and, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> so, but we had to, and we had to have kind of like bowed our heads slightly, you know, and uh, did we say amen? I know that we were sort of, lots of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I did. I think, probably ch chimed in there. Yeah. And he sang um, it. Yeah, exactly. So, um. Like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so, but before, again, you see, what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there, I don't know who he is, says, there's a lot of people here this, this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He says, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. 
And then he went. Table seventy-seven. Mr. Russ Abbott, and we all round of applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, actually, really, he looked like uh, a bit like um, uh, Barrett Holmes, the <laughs> hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went table one hundred and seven, the cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, well, when is this going to? Uh, he went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know. A hundred. Table fifty-three. John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman. Right, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, t table seventy. Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was there was booing yeah. there, and yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Could the cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> we didn't I, see Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show when they went up. They won an award. Cowell and uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, forty-three. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> <laughs> empty, empty. Yes. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he uses this speech, he goes, oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, a Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hunniford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> that's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria Hunniford. I don't know what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done a Radio 2 show, I don't think that's well, on not anymore. Well, we're not dissing no, anyone. Good luck we're to not it. taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she, just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad-lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, actually she's been there for a long time. Yeah. It's, and it's like, I was thought she was going, she doesn't call, you yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how she was. We thought she was going to get awards. photos out, maybe, start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and, uh, you know, everyone there, Henry Coop was there. So Henry <laughs> it was so good because every single was element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, uh, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? <laughs> Table 60. Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> that's a uh, corner shop. Lessons learned from Rocky One to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great. It's real glam rock. That's T Rex and Bowie. I was not a place them up from uh, Siggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album. I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. all right? Oh, of course, yeah, always. Yeah, always. A bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we uh, uh, with the education of Carl. Last week he did. Um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. Before that, the week before that, you learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. So, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't going well. And they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can... I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara... It's the same thing. Of... Che Guevara, when he was a kid... Yeah. ...had, like, asthma. Yeah. Right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh... Um... He only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah. Seriously, he phoned me up in the week. I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it. I've just skimmed it. I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out, or it's not true. Right. Which, so which he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, mm. but we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look, did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles? <laughs> testicles absence of. So sort of skim <laughs> through, because- One of. It, yeah. It, mother, <laughs> mother. Brackets other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Albert Hall. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in, in like, when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on, 
and somebody put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah, yeah. And but I'm the wondering table was under the him. table. Yeah, but. What, you wondering if it blew a testicle? It was, it was, what, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball thing. sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert who phoned up, maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could, uh, maybe phone up and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh wait, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. You need to have at least I, I, a PhD I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and who's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about I, any old nutter. Uh, and also, um, uh, Carl's lottery numbers. He's a little bit more confident this week. Okay, good. He, he, he went there more like it. And I looked at him and I laughed. He went, no, no, even Suzanne said I'm, I'm on, more on the right lines there. <laughs> Is there uh, anyone who, um, uh, has done a degree in maths or A-level maths that can bear- Carl won't believe this, right? Carl thinks, I was trying to, I, I know I was uh, partly doing it to confuse him, just see that look on his face like a cat, right? But there is, th the, the chances with a, a, a random numbers, for, the, for example the lottery, of getting one, two, three, four, five, six, are no greater than any other single combination. Right. Now that's true. I don't mean you're more likely to get one, two, three, four, five, six than any other combination put together, but then any other individual combination, they're all equal. It's counterintuitive, I know. You, I know you think that to get a run of one to six is less likely than anything else, but it's not. Uh, any name it to It's not, Carl. If there's a, a probability- well, it's never happened. Yeah, it's, ne it's never happened. Yeah, but there's any well, number there's of combinations a, that never happened. happened. Every one of those combinations that have come up, have happened, and they're just as likely, or unlikely, as any other combination, right? Mm -hmm. It's just that you feel, intuitively, right, that one, two, three, four, five, six, are, is less likely than one, seven, twelve, thirty-four, sixty, you know what I mean? Well, I didn't win. <laughs> Play record. Okay. <laughs> Wu Tang Clan, Uzi, on XFM 104.9. Well, here we are, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hooray! Brilliant! Guinness, etc. Oh, I hate people, I hate British English people, I should say, who are obsessed with celebrating St. Patrick's Day. You know, not crazy, it's like Chris Evans used to rave on about it. We're going to Dublin, we're going to get drunk, wow. It's like, it means nothing I to I think Uzi's XFM people, just did that, to be well, honest. Well, yeah, exactly. Just as bad. Careful, bad. careful, they are employers. You don't want to, you don't want to annoy him. What, what would we do without this? <laughs> well, that's true. I yeah, have an enjoyable Saturday. No, this is my favourite two hours. You like this, don't you? Well, I don't know. We're not, we can't do this through May and June. No, we'll be gone. We've got to be, we've got to record the second series of The Office. What are we going to do, Carl? What are you going to do on a Saturday? Host the show yourself? Do it on my own. Yeah. You, you are not. Are you seriously thinking of it? If they asked you made to do you it? everything you like. Why, why would you not think about it? Because I've, I've been there, done that. <laughs> 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 Next challenge, please! Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Do you know what, do you know what, what St. Patrick did? Why he was revered as a saint and everything? What was he famous for in Ireland? He did, he rid Ireland of something. I don't know, but I bet he started off with something odd happening in his life. <laughs> <laughs> what, you think he had asthma or something as a kid? <laughs> they, all, they all do. Uh, and he took it out on what though? What did he do? Exactly, he took it out on something. What did he do? What did he rid Ireland of? Uh St. Patrick. St. Patrick. This is why we're gonna get crazy and drunk tomorrow. This is why we're all so happy to celebrate his, uh, anniversary, or whatever it is yes. we're celebrating. This is that's why, why we- well, That's why we have a crack. Yeah, this is why we don't bother to celebrate, you know, the birthdays of James Joyce, you know, one of the great novelists of this century, or Samuel Beckett, one of the great playwrights. We actually celebrate this man, St. Patrick, the man oh, who I did don't, what. Oh, I don't diss him, he, he did a good job of it as well, because there's none there now. There are none of these in Ireland, so- mm. He rid Ireland of something. Come on, Carl. Think of something. Just give us an answer. What's he went round on a horse whacking them and... He went on a horse whacking them? Yeah. yeah. What was it, Carl? What did he rid Ireland of? Went on a horse. Foxes. I don't well, know. No, you're no, on the right lines. On the right lines. Um, it was an animal. Oh. Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it? it was. Yes, it was bears. <laughs> wow. It was snakes. Right. And there are no snakes in Ireland. He rid Ireland of all the snakes. Yeah. Who did it here then? Because there isn't that many. 
Well, I think he, he had a he had a stab at over here as well, but got tired and went back. Yeah, that's why there's it's, just a few snakes here. Is, is it true that there are no snakes in Ireland? I think it is. I think if, if someone called this. And what is there? Is there any historical evidence for Saint Patrick ridding them of? I mean, how did he do it? Was it like the Pied Piper? See, I, I I'm not convinced that he did go around killing snakes, but there are no snakes really? in Ireland, and that's yeah. I, I don't think he's now. If someone knows he's now, we were someone just uh, we had a few uh, uh, probability experts and statisticians and, and maths graduates confirming. That indeed I was correct that the probability of one to six in a row is no more or less likely than any other single combination mm. in a totally random selection of balls, which brings us back to Hitler, doesn't it? Because he only had one, didn't he? Well, um, but coming up, we'll be asking Carl all about Hitler, the education of Carl. He's done Rasputin, he's done Che Guevara. Plus, of course, uh, White Van Carl, where we White asked Van Carl, Carl some of the, uh, you know, his opinions on some of the hot potatoes of the week. You learned as you go along, because you've got something about St. Patrick there. Yeah. That was thrown in for free. That was an extra... I'll, I'll learn you something here. Snakes. Well, yeah. I'll, sorry, I'll just stop you there, and I'll teach you something, right? Oh, go on, then. You don't learn someone something. You teach them something. Yeah. It's it's not tra it, it, it one's passive. You you you, know you learn, you? Ricky. I'm or, sorry, mate, but I don't think you should be teaching people how to speak or use grammar. <laughs> I just don't think it's appropriate. <laughs> it's like it's embarrassing, <laughs> frankly, because there's so many errors you're making. It's like we, where to start with you? <sighs> snakes, right? You're talking about snakes. Yeah. For, a lot of snakes are born with two heads. It's like a it's like a. <laughs> Familiar type thing that's n that happens to snakes. Okay, people. yeah, they take it for granted, don't they? Right, snakes born two heads. They'll fight each other for food, even though it's going in the same body. Isn't that weird? Mm. Were there kids at school that you went <laughs> <laughs> who it's had two heads? The with snake that? twins yeah. from Mosley. Oh, was, it, was, it, was there, there was kids at your school with two heads? Was that right? What? No, no, they had, they big, had heads. big heads. Oh, they had big heads and webbed hands, but they right. weren't related, and they they weren't friends because that would have been too obvious. Yeah. He said, yeah. "Oh, oh, Steve, listen, before you came in, right? I sneezed a couple of times. Enough, I'm allergic. To I've still got a bit of a cold, and I said, oh God, he went, he went, bloody hell! I was like, sorry, and he went, and he went, you know, you can't sneeze with your eyes open. I went, yeah." Yeah, and then he was obviously thinking to himself still, and after a pause he went, would your eyes really fly out? <laughs> uh, and I started laughing, he went, no, because that, has anyone ever done that, you think? <laughs> has anyone ever held someone down, torturing them, and held their eyelids open and gave them pepper and see if their eyes would fly out? And he said, and then, and then he went, uh, uh, I'm just looking at him again, the silence, and, he, and he, then he went, of his own accord, he just went, I can't see it happening. <laughs> <laughs> Your song here, Ricky. Oh, this, uh, yeah, uh, um, Bowie, Sorrow, Beautiful. <laughs> Sorrow by David Bowie. Uh, I've got that on a compilation today, but I, I think it's off originally off uh, the Pin Ups album, the one we did all the covers, because he didn't write that, did he? That was the one with um, him and Twiggy on the front cover, isn't it? Right. I haven't had that for ages. I haven't got that. So uh, sorry, you lost me. I don't know what you're talking about. Are you reading the book there? No, I was just reading the um, the uh, brochure there, the uh, program, if you will, for the uh, Television and Radio Industries Club Awards that we went to. Incidentally, we we, we lost. Mm. Uh, we we lost to Linda Green. Yeah, we didn't win an award. For the best comedy. But uh, you might be interested to know that Tom O'Connor is in constant demand for corporate functions both here and abroad, and his client list includes many multinational companies. No mean golfer, Tom took the literary world by surprise in 1992 when his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I noticed it didn't take the, the literary world by storm. No. <laughs> it took it by surprise. They're going, we can't say storm. <laughs> we can't, we've got to say by surprise from behind. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but uh, his, his first humorous golf book, From the Wood to the Tees, made the bestseller list. I don't know if that's just books about golf, that bestseller list. Subsequent successful books include One Flew Over the Clubhouse. Brilliant. <laughs> Genius. Take a Funny Turn, Follow Me, I'm Right Behind You, and Eat Like a Horse, Drink Like a Fish. Does it but mention Celebrity s Squares? Didn't he do that? No. Uh, he did, um, the Crosswits. name that tune. Well, that's right. Um, I was. Well, it's uh, Crosswords. Do you remember Crosswords? It, it was, was the, from the 80s. It was like a crossword game oh, show. It was yeah. often with um, Kate Copstick. But <laughs> I saw one right. It was on. The, it was on Challenge uh, TV. Being repeated. And no, Andy Crane. Remember Andy Crane? Yeah. To, he was on the. He was the uh, link man, and he went coming up next. Uh, Tom O'Connor with uh, uh, Crosswords. With uh, well, in my opinion, one of the best Crosswords players of all time, John Junkin. <laughs> 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 oh. 
favourite Crosswitz player? Uh, it's got to be Junkin for me as well. But Copstick was Barry all right. Barry Cryer's bloody good. Though. Cryer was good. Cryer was good. I watched Call My Bluff um, uh, in the week. Is this with Toxic and uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was quite good. I quite enjoyed I it. I imagine you could get on there if you wanted. I used to watch it with um, what's his name? Frank Moore. <laughs> yeah, Frank Moore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was great. You're impression. brilliant impressions because obviously I, while Bowie was playing, you were doing your infamous Bowie impression, which is th the best one you do actually. Well, that's just because Carl said, you know what? He said I'd love to go out for a drink with David Bowie. I have all the people that come in here for sessions. I think he's really good him, and I said I think he'd like you as well. That's all, and I just went, hello, Carl. You're strange. You're alien. It interests me. Myself and Ian, I'd like to put you on them. Yeah, I just imagine you and Bowie in a pub somewhere. Isn't that pretty much the same impression you do when you do Ian Canfield? No. <laughs> Ian Canfield's more like that. <laughs> but not on air. On air he's sort of like this sort of eloquent 40 year old capital DJ. Yeah. And but uh, when you talk to him in the studio... In, he's, in slowly like turning, he's, st he's slowly turning into uh, Tommy Vance, isn't he? Mm. This is one of his pillars of rock, Canfield. He loves Vance, <coughs> Lemmy, uh, Diano. If we uh, if we run out of material later in the show, which is you know, likely... Yeah. Uh, considering we're, we're now talking about no, Ian Campbell. We ran out of it favorite. at five past one. Exactly. But could we, could I maybe just sort of interview you as David Bowie? Yeah, that would... a sort of humorous sketch? Yeah, that would be fantastic. Maybe it could be the idea that what if, like, David Bowie was, you know, a cab driver? What well, would he say? What was his well, sort of the funny the, things he would we say? We saw that, um, that, what was that in when it said, uh, um, Dead Ringers coming up? If you've ever wondered what, uh, yeah, it did would you sound see like... This? Dead Ringers is this impressionist show they did a, it's on Radio 4 and they did a TV version. Yeah, I saw it. What did you make of it? I didn't like it. It was all right. No, it was just that the write-up in uh, the one magazine, times, it was. times said, uh, "Ever wondered what it'd be like if uh, Robbie Williams was singing George Formby, or what would it be like if uh, there was an animal it was, hospital was, was hosted was... by uh, Anne Robinson?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I actually, you know, I have, I have wondered. Was it were those two sketches on there last night? Yeah, yeah. What were yeah. they like? You are, you are the, weakest you are the weakest dog. Stink. Or something? <laughs> no, what was it? It was something like the the. They had to vote off an animal to die or something. It was something like that, yeah. It was this is right. flagging. Quick, do your Bowie again. Um, oh, come in here. Look, it's Tim Machine. Now let's play Changes. Hello, Iggy Pop, you nutter. Stop cutting your sound. <laughs> Travis? Flowers in the window on XFM 104.9, two o'clock, halfway through. Oh, it's our favourite time, isn't it? My yeah. favourite time of the week where we come in here and uh, play some records, have a chat. Ricky, a lot of people are wondering who you are. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hi. And there's little Carl over there. Uh -huh. Steve, it's time for... White Van Carl. Uh, we should definitely get some jingles. I think it, it, the show sort of lacks jingles, I think. Yeah. Noises. Yeah. Funny sound effects. Yeah. Don't know why I'm What's Mr. Nosy Neighbour interested in? Hello, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should definitely get some pre-recorded comedy noises. Yeah, yeah well, that's my job, but unfortunately I'm busy reading about Hitler. <laughs> 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 oh, um, oh. For those that don't no, I'm not familiar with this feature. Basically, uh, the Sun runs a white van man column where um, it asks uh, just people who, you know, every kind of, every every men and women, their views on uh, news stories from the week, and uh, we decided we'd just ask Carl his opinion on some of the same issues. This week... Not um, like us to rip off another idea and just use no, it no, for no, our own... No, 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 no. No, but this time... The yeah, white van man in the Sun this week is Herbie Crossman from Harrow in Middlesex. Um, Herbie. And he's been he's asked, asked his opinion, Carl, and what's yours, on pop idol Will Young admitting he is gay. Come um, on, Carl. It's... I don't understand what the big deal is, to be honest. Okay. No. Talking to different people about it, and they've said, oh, it could affect the sales, you know, girls won't like him anymore, which I think is... is rubbish. Yeah, because it finished George Michael's career, didn't it? Well, yeah, and I was thinking when I was growing up, right... And, and Freddie Mercury. I was into, uh, Kim Wilde, right? Sure. Now... And her kids You're not going to tell me she's gay, are you? No, but if she was, if they said, oh, she's, she's, you know... A, a leather, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say right. That's it. I'm taking kids in America back to the shop. I'm disgusted. Sure. I liked her. Yeah. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna like meet her and, and marry her and that. So what does it matter? Yeah. Will Young, he's a good voice. He's gay. You know, a lot of gay people in the world. Georgie boy was gay. I guess. There you go. Nothing more and nothing less. The kindest guy I ever knew. So no Do your Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. That's one of your favourite songs, isn't it? Brilliant. Killing a Georgie parts one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, um, 
What do you make of the police protesting to Parliament over reforms? That's not the band. Before you say. Right, wh what's all that about? <laughs> okay, well, the police have uh, had various kind of gripes and grumbles which they've taken to Parliament, try and get them sorted. Like what? Well, it could take ages, basically. They, they don't like the pointy to... helmets anymore. Yeah. They want flat caps. They feel that their, um, they, you know, they, their powers are restricted. They get a lot of bad press. They're not being paid. Well, they they're not, they're under resourced. They, they actually um, demonstrated, didn't they, outside? I think somewhere. they may have done yeah, yet. Yeah. Well, at least they're doing something about it instead of just sitting there moaning. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. They're, they're going to the top, trying to sort it out. Yeah. yeah. I admire that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah. do you make of the police generally? Are they doing a good job? Um, they've woke me up a couple of times at about four in the morning when I was a kid. Right, was that because they were looking at, That's they were looking I, for your brother in his tank? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did this German tank just come through here? Yeah. No, my mates nicked cars and gave my name and all that. Right. <laughs> were they friends of yours? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, what do you make of fears that dumped Britney Spears, she's been dumped by her boyfriend, there's worries that she may be cracking up, Carl? <sighs> what, you concerned? What, what are the signs? <coughs> Uh, well, uh, I'm not entirely sure. I'm just reading from this section, but I would assume that she's obviously showed signs of depression, maybe. She'll be all right. I remember, like, you know, <laughs> Zoe Harris, when she sort of got bored of me when I was a kid. Yeah. Get over it. I don't even think about it now. <laughs> 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 what, uh, and how long did it take you, how long did it take you to get over Zoe? Zoe Harris! How long did it take <laughs> to you? To be honest, right, it was like one of my first girlfriends, and she was a pain. I remember, I went out with her because <laughs> she wouldn't stop hassling me, right? Yeah. I remember <laughs> a good reason reason that. I love that. that. Oh, go on then. I never talked to her, and then the <laughs> bit that really got me, I thought I half liked her, and then I remember, right, we're at a school party, sort of infant school. <laughs> <laughs> infant school? Right. Are you sure it wasn't junior school? Well, <laughs> it's on the cusp, yeah. right, when you're about to leave infants and go yeah. to the next one. Yeah. And, um, she was crying. Because you were saying, I don't think we should move in together. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he was crying. She was crying. Oh, oh well, was she? Had you she stolen her milk? She must have been nearly six. Why didn't she grow up? No, so she, was, she was crying because somebody had stood on a dress and put a bit of an hole in it. And I said, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. Oh, so God. You <laughs> I just think him. So you gave her a slap? I just think of him he's like six, like with clogs and a flat, flat cap going slightly bald, going, for yeah. Christ's sake, woman, come on. <laughs> oh, light my pipe. Oh. That finished it, because all the mates were saying, come on, Carl, she's upset, and I was like, oh, whatever. So <laughs> again. Hold on, though, wait a minute, what do you mean all the mates were saying, like, come on, Carl? They were six, weren't they? Yeah, but they were saying, come on, she's crying, help her out. And, like, and you did nothing? I don't know. She got injured. <laughs> Got all in a skirt. Yeah, but she was upset and you were her boyfriend. Well. So what did you do? Tell me the story. Where were you? Work out. You were at some kind of school do. <laughs> there was a hole That's in her dress. That's why it didn't work out, he said. I don't, do you treat your current girlfriend in the same way? This callous disregard for someone's feelings. Current, his current oh. girlfriend does not tread on her dress. Does yeah. she? Huh. Oh, she didn't so, know, as far did as you're concerned, what was her name? Sarah? Zoe. Zoe Harris. You just felt like, well, you know, if she's going to make a whinge about, you know, a silly little hole, screw her. Yeah. You're all, you're all heart, Carl. What would you have done? I'd have gone over there and give her a lovely kiss. No, you wouldn't. Yes, we I were, would. We were playing dead arm. I was giving another question. Okay, very final, oh. um, thought then. Uh, what do you say to the fact that judge, a judge has decided that uh, we, the general public, have a right to know about uh, stars' flings? Basically, this is an excuse, this is basically saying, should papers be allowed to print tittle-tattle about celebrities, oh, this is providing it's proven true. Oh, this, this is something about, isn't it, a Division One football or something, it's definitely had a, a, a premiership football, it's unfair, and it is true, but he's trying to keep privacy, and the judge said, well, it's not for us to censor the press over things that are true, Right. It's up to the general public to either boycott or not, you know, that, that publication. What do you think, Carl? What about all this, you know, exposing, uh, going through the, uh, you know, the bins of celebrities? It's not right, is it? But no. people are uh, interested in, in it and buy the papers to read it, do you know what I mean? I mean, like I said to you the other week, everyone has to go at Beckham for not being that bright. But at the end of the day, he's a good footballer. It doesn't really matter what goes on yeah. off the pitch, does it? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So but what if you were I a celebrity and they sort of splashed over the front page the fact that you just, you know, didn't care less for Zoe Harris because, yeah. Yeah. and her torn dress? Zoe Harris is still upset. Yeah, they dug her out, you know. The night Carl Pilkington reduced me to tears. <sighs> nah, I haven't done anything that bad. Sure. I wouldn't be worried. Did you win the dead arm contest? No. 
I was thinking about that the other day. Do you think there's a chance I could get blood clots in later life? Did you play that a lot? Yeah, a hell of a lot. Did you ever do it, but like, kind of headbutting? No. Okay. Because that would have explained something. Dead arms. Sure. Any more? No, that's it, Carl. Um, it was do. with people's blessing, was it? You had to give them a go? Yeah. And you played it with girls? No. Alright. Oh, with my mates. Right. So oh, okay. you were playing dead arms while she was off dancing and getting her hole ruined? Yeah. <laughs> you romantic, you. That's great. And you haven't changed a bit, have you? You still do that to this day, don't you? At functions and events. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, well, dear. what track we got here? You've got a track. Yes, history. I just thought I'd dig out some old uh, Elliot Smith. Uh, I've quite enjoyed his work, and this was a previous single and uh, the first track from his album Figure Eight, Son of Sam. XFM 104.9. Sorry, I was going to uh, back Go announce that track and just mention it was uh, Elliot Smith and the track Son of Sam. Well, I think I'd just better ask um, Carl a couple of quick questions about Hitler. Then we can, uh, we can you know, get on with our lives. Okay, yeah, we can tick that particular box. <laughs> yeah, put that, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, Carl. Put okay, that particular it's, dictator it's, to bed. It's, we, it's, it's week three of his education. We've, you've nailed Russ Butin and Che Guevara. I don't want to lose complete sight of those. I, you know, I'll maybe um, ask you a couple of those in the week just to see, keep your your mind on it. But Hitler, what, tell what us a story. What have you learnt? Do you want to ask some questions? Uh, no, not really. Just, 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 just sum it up in a minute. What you, what, what I can't do, you do it in a minute. <laughs> well, uh, can I ask some questions then? Uh, where was he born? Austria. Tell us about his early life. Right, he was a young lad. <laughs> um, he, uh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> what in his early life? <laughs> Okay. Yeah. He, what's her name? His his um his mum yeah. was his dad's second cousin, which is a bit weird. Yeah, that is weird. Um, they had five kids. <laughs> He's going. Yeah, it's usually first cousin where I come from. <laughs> oh, right. that's unfair, isn't it? Jeez, There's no cool. need for that. There Go was on. Uh, there was there was five kids, but only two of them, including Hitler, um, including uh, him and his sister, survived. The others died at an early age. Okay. Right. right. Um, anyway, so, they grew up, and, um, the mum died, and the dad died, and that, and he thought, oh, what am I going to do? Because he didn't do well at school, didn't have many qualifications. No. Liked art. Did he have a GCSE in history? Liked art, right, and then, um, so he said, right, I'm going to go out to Munich. I missed a bit out, actually. Jewish people were in Austria, he didn't really like them. Okay. Uh, he thought they got, you know, uh, special treatments and stuff, and just didn't like him. So he went to Munich and um, he uh, joined the army. Right. Yeah? Yeah. And um, he was in the army and he got injured. Right. So he went to hospital and whilst he was in hospital, uh, the World War One ended and he was like, oh God, I want to... I was enjoying that. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> Don't, because you're breaking the concentration. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I'm not even sure I want to join in on this one, just in case. Okay. Right, go on. Right, so, um, so... He was in hospital. He was in hospital. He gets a bit better. He's never that fit, though. He's one of these blokes who was always ill. Uh, was on something like 30 tablets a day or something. Comes out of there, uh, joins some other army. Um, God, you know, I knew it all this morning. Listen, I can see it running to ground. <laughs> I just see his face going, I'm, I'm not nailing the fact, am I? And joined a, another army and he was... Well, <laughs> listen, listen, let's try to help you. So here's, a good bit, here's a good bit, I remember this bit. He thought that war to men, right, was like childbirth is to women. That's how important he thought he was. Oh, right. Right? So it's like, um, <laughs> you know, you, you fight for nine months and at the end of it, you own something, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um... He goes on and all that. He's in Berlin. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's, you know, he's he's, uh, he's fighting his way through, like, you know, trying to take over countries and that. And he does, uh, does he do Berlin? Does he? Sorry, Sorry wait a minute. Is he, is he, is he, uh, <laughs> is he Chancellor yet? Um, what year is it? 35? So let's what, skip, where let's skip the kind of climb to power then. He's now, he's now, he's now the dictator of Germany. Right, he's in yeah. charge, yeah. And this is when, you know, he gets his own back on the Jewish people and that, and he's, he's, uh, he's got his own little armies, uh, and he's setting fire to Jewish businesses and, and all this. And, uh, anyway, cut a long story short, he, uh... Please do. 
he, uh, when he came to, like, f fighting Britain. Yeah. Came a bit sort of un unstuck. Yeah. Right? Started fighting Not back. so easy, is it, this world domination, Adolf? Britain was there. France was helping out. Yeah. Americans were helping out. Yeah. So, well, oh, God. So a bit goes, late, but yeah, go he on. Go he goes into a bunker in Berlin. Yeah. And it's all kicking off. Yeah. And apparently, like, Germany sort of surrenders. Yeah. Says it's all over, forget it, we can't beat you. He was really annoyed with this, and he thought, oh, I can't, I can't show my face around here. <laughs> so he, uh... Because <laughs> it would be embarrassing. He's, he's with his missus, who nobody knew was his wife. Right. Eva, in this bunker. Yeah. And, um, so, uh, so he said, oh, I've had enough of this. He shoots himself. Yeah. <laughs> she poisons herself. And the chauffeur buries him or something, or burns him. Right. And, uh, in all the time he was in charge, 50 million people died. So that's 1918 to 1945. Yeah. Uh, between... It felt like that. Between, <laughs> between Travis and the Red yeah. Hot Chili Peppers. Next right. week. That's fantastic. That's remarkable. Ne I have to say that you, you, you sort of lost your grasp somewhere along the line, because you started off confidently, but... You lost your I've had a really busy week, and last night I was like, whizzing through it. Sure. And then this morning, I woke up, and, you know, Suzanne had been away for about three days, right? Yeah. I, I, I hardly spoke to her. She's been busy, I've been busy. First thing to say when I wake up, oh, just ask me some stuff on Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> you are romantic. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's how stressful it's getting. But I knew it all this morning, honestly. No, but that's, that's fine. I think you've summed up the, you know, you've done that. You right, just, just for a bit of balance, um, I've got your next week's, um, homework. It's the same, same series, there's little books, there's tiny little books, just three inches long by two inches wide. Crammed Win with so much information there. Winston Churchill. There you go. You'll enjoy that. Yeah? I, I'm getting a bit bored now, though. <laughs> this is what happened in school. Think of the listeners. Did really well in infants. Once got to secondary, lost interest. Was it the breakup between <laughs> you and Harris? <laughs> and Zoe. The, 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 well, I'm wondering if, yeah, you've spiralled into something there. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's like all these other... You know, these men, these men of history, they always had sort of things happen in their early childhood, didn't they? Maybe yeah. yours is the Zoe Harris, um, dress yeah. incident. Well, let's just refer to it as the Zoe incident. Yeah. From now on. Yeah. yeah. Winston Churchill, the bit I left out in the Hitler story, Hitler was scared of this man. Yeah. And I can tell you something else about Winston Churchill. Go on. Um, he said he can remember being in the womb. <laughs> and he was born in a public toilet. <laughs> Fly <laughs> record. <laughs> <laughs>and Carl. Um, Carl called me in the week, Steve. I yes. know I'm, I know we sort of ban each other from speaking to him. Well, you seem to have just disobeyed that rule. I, I can't believe it. I just can't resist it. But, um, he said, uh, oh, just saw a programme. He said, what's that big balloon that blew up? And the newsreader was going all mental. And I went, is that the, the Hindenburg? He went, yeah. Oh, I said it was a, a big Zeppelin. He went, yeah. He went, what happened? I said, I said, well, it was helium, wasn't it? And I went, yeah. I said, it was a big, just a huge Zeppelin full of helium. And what caused us, I don't know, it could be a spark or anything, but of course it just goes, because it's helium so flammable. And he went, now they didn't show this in the documentary, but did all their voices go funny? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what? He went, well, no, even if you take a little bit of a little balloon of helium, your voice goes funny. So if that was like millions of gallons of it and it blew up in the air and you were, and it was in the atmosphere, <laughs> You'd be carrying me talking like Donald Duck, he went. So, imagine that. God. And, they, and but I, what I liked about it, I said, this wasn't in the documentary. No. No, it's an oversight. Maybe just time was against him and they didn't have time to explain Just it, like that, but that book about Hitler didn't have his one ball incident. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's annoyed me, that. What? What has? The old Hitler book. Why? Just, just because I, I knew it all. Do you know what I mean? I was cycling in today, I was like, yeah. Yeah, going through it all again. Yeah. Had it all in my head. But that's why you should know something as opposed to just cram and have a piece of trivia that's, that's pre precariously sort of teetering on the edge. But what I don't understand you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's... Well, you're not interested by it. That's it's what I mean. It's one of the most you know, fascinating things. I you am, you know all about things you're interested in, you never forget them, do you? You know? Yeah, I, I was a bit interested in it, but like I say, I mean, I'm cramming all this in, in into a, a normal week. Do you <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. You go on and... You know, you watch telly and that in the week, you've got loads of leisurely time. I'm sort of using the only little bit of rest time I have to learn, as well as try to do all my other stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's 
he texted me yesterday about Hitler. He went, he went, stop making me read this heavy shit. He said, I've seen in the back of this book, there's one on Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it is interesting, but not when you have to read it, do you know what I mean? Right. It's, it's but do you think you'd have read time. it in your leisure time? To be honest? No, you wouldn't no, have, would you? I wouldn't. No, what not. do you do in your leisure time? Um, I like, you know, going f out for food and that. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Foraging? What do you mean going out <laughs> yeah. for food? They like, come out of a little yeah. hole and go, <laughs> go hunting. Mm. Yeah. This is Carl. He's hungry. He knows he has to get to the greasy spoon by 11. Wow. 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 Many of he Carl's close friends have never made it across this road. <laughs> there was a zebra crossing installed just for the safety of Carl. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, can I have a bacon body and... Carl is enjoying his... Wow, but he has to get back. <laughs> his girlfriend's asked for one as well. <laughs> She's home with a PlayStation 2. <laughs> wow. Oh. Beep. <laughs> Alright, Rick. It was David Bowie impressions earlier, now it's just a selection of crazy sound effects, like that guy you in Police you Academy. Some. You said you wanted some. He hasn't got time to make them up, he's reading about Hitler, you heard him. Do a machine we've, gun or a helicopter. We've, we've, got, we've got to do all our own sound effects. <laughs> oh. So do you, want a, do you want a week off? Do you not want to learn about Winston Churchill? Why don't you read it if you want to, and just, you know, if you if you get interested then read on, I think that's- Cause that's what I did with school and it didn't work. <laughs> no, you decided you didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... But hasn't that, hasn't that taught you something? <laughs> Can't we just do it like a TV series? It doesn't go on forever. We've done three weeks. Give it a rest now for the, for like the summer. Yeah, cause most series last for three weeks. <laughs> well, you know. Yeah. Okay. What, what's your favourite subject in the world? What's your favourite thing in the world? Um... I would have said, um, what, at school, like? No, just, just in, in, in life. life. What's, what are you interested in? I like, what? I like little interesting bits, like... <laughs> Um, <laughs> Sentences. Atlantic Ocean. It's got 17 quadril quadrillion gallons of water in it. Right. Well, that's that's interesting. Without having to read a book. And stuff. Why is that interesting, though? What what are you basing that on? What, what when you when you think of 17 quadrillion? It's a lot, what, isn't it? What are you imagining? Just like a big wave. Imagine <laughs> how much water. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what's your subject then? I don't know. No, it's just that that Wilson was your favourite subject. You gave me a fact <laughs> that is so. No, but that, that sort of thing. Like I said to you before, you were talking about monkeys, and I said, do you know that if you give a monkey a childbirth tablet, it works on it the same way because it's it's kitted out the same. Could I just say something? We weren't talking about monkeys. What were we talking about? then? No, we were talking about something completely different. And you went. If you give a monkey a childbirth, but it works. That's what you said. No, we were talking about monkeys. We were. We were talking about sneezing. Yeah. Yeah, and you went, if you give a monkey childbirth pills, it works. That's, that's, that's... Well, we're yeah, well, we're talking about interesting things about sneezing, <laughs> and I remembered an interesting fact about monkeys. <laughs> so... <laughs> anyway, um, half past two, brilliant. Um, oh. what did happen to that bloke who used to make the sound effects in Police Academy? I don't know. He was brilliant, wasn't he? Do you remember him? I don't remember was him. Was he called Hightower? Yeah, he was good. Yeah? If anyone knows, give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs>We've had a number of calls and emails yeah. pointing out that the Hindenburg disaster was not because the Ze Zeppelin was filled with helium, hydrogen. but filled with hydrogen. All right, okay. Well, I thought about that when he told me in the well, week. Yeah, but, but I assumed he must have got that off from the do documentary. So it just it just went up. So that's, that's probably why the the voices didn't go That funny. was probably why it didn't feature in the documentary. Yeah. But it seems to me we should have thought of that. I mean, like, it's school fates and stuff where they're, like, filling little balloons with helium. Yeah. You know, there'd be all kinds of horror stories if they were just, you know, just blowing up, you know, left, right and centre. I don't think you can just blow helium up like that, can you? What? Isn't that the point? What well, I'm mean? saying is it's not, it's, it can't be as potentially lethal as hydrogen, helium. Well, what, hydrogen isn't as bad as helium? No, helium's not as bad as hydrogen. I don't know what you're saying, because that, that Hindenburg was hydrogen. Yeah, and I'm saying, why did we think it was helium? That's crazy. You go to fates, school fates and stuff with like little kids, and they're filling up little balloons with helium. They wouldn't have big canisters of helium, you know, a, a charity event or a, you know, a small kind if of bring and buy sale if it was deadly. Yeah, but it's not as big. I mean, when you buy those balloons at a fair, it's not as big as that uh, 
that, that big But presumably balloon. it's still flammable, is it? But it wasn't, it wasn't the fact how dangerous the, the rare gas was, or the, it was the fact that, um, it was made of this thing that caught fire and just went, there was nothing, a hole in it would have been as bad. It just, it just burnt quickly and fell to the ground because the hydrogen or helium escaped. It wasn't, it was irrelevant that, what, what the gas was, wasn't it? I thought it was that there was supposed to be some kind of explosion. Well, I don't know what it was, but the point is because the outer thing was so thin, right, the, the gas inside escaped and it fell to the so ground. So it just fell to the ground like one of the, like when you've popped a balloon? Mm -hmm. Well, not, not, not It didn't quite. sort of go <laughs> It didn't like flap all over no. the place and make a zany noise. But I'll tell you what, because when I was looking on the internet in the week for it, I was like trying to get a bit more info on it. Guess how many balloons it would take, helium balloons, to lift a human up? <laughs> Go on. 6,000. Should we do it? If you want. Brilliant. Next week, that's got to be a challenge. Can we, can we, is, if, is there a sort of balloon company or, or, or some sort of, you know, uh, party company that are willing to sponsor us to lift Carl <laughs> into the air right. with helium balloons? 10 feet off the ground, where we're tethering him down, right? Is there someone willing to pay for 6,000 balloons to try and lift We can maybe up? get some kind of company to sponsor it. I'm thinking like Electrolux, if they're going to sponsor puddings. If they're going to sponsor puddings, uh, you know, and, uh, 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 celebrities, Russ Abbott, they will sponsor Carl being lift. Heat magazine, Heat magazine, come on. They're a big selling, very successful magazine there, and they know about Carl because they've mentioned him. Heat magazine, can we have a heat balloon? Yeah? Oh, six Carl, thousand's an awful into lot. Into the really. air, six. Th yeah, it's the heat. Sa six thousand Carl challenge. Lift Carl ten feet into the air. Yeah. Come on. What about if it was Carl and Doctor Fox? We could get two different balloons. I think we need a lot more than six thousand. A lot more for Fox, to, isn't it? Mix. Yeah. <laughs> I just explained what I'm laughing at. Right? Uh, we just had a call um, from someone saying his company would sponsor Carl, right, to be raised by all these balloons if he could have a walk-on part in the office. And uh, uh, we immediately went, "Oh, we're worried about that sort of thing. You can't really promise that artistically." You know? And I was worried about the legality of it as well. How can you promise someone that for personal gain? That's a private and all that sort of stuff, right? And I went, "Oh, I don't know." In any way, put the phone down to him, and Carl went. <laughs> I love the fact you're more effing worried about that than me being raised 30 feet in the effing air. <laughs> 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 you, you started getting scared, did you? Are you worried about it? Well, you're quite excited about the idea of the challenge, though, aren't you? I like the idea, but I want, like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like the idea, Carl? Oh, what if it went all wrong and we're there going, oh, the humanity of it. I think we need Carl to get... Carl is just, he's just... <laughs> turned... And the rope would pull out my trousers and pull <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, it's definitely got to be Dr. Fox if that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, we've got to do this. So, hang on, but let's just no. think about the... Because, wait a minute, before, I mean, we say this, but we'd have to get all kinds of health and safety people involved. No, we, no, we wouldn't. Of course we can't just start <laughs> raising you in the air. No, you're allowed to do it on private land, aren't you? Look, what happened to the Hindenburg? No, but that was... That was that was, <laughs> I was just saying, there was lots of people died. <laughs> Listen, look, all we do is we get all, we get someone right. But what if what if he get, he gets loose and he just floats off into the air? <laughs> then we never, and he meets his magpie that he lost. He yeah, used to peck I his grifter. <laughs> So, wait, I'm sorry, sorry, no, listen, listen, we've got to do this. No, but Please. Just have a minute. Let's no. just stop and think about it. It's right. 60,000 balloons. balloons. No, no it's six, not. It's 6,000. 6, 6, but 6,000 balloons are a lot of balloons. No, it's not. No, no, oh, it's not. Be silly. For 6, sponsorship, people pay for... Uh, no, listen, it's worth it. There must be a company out there that are paying for this, just so we can film well, hang it. Hang on, is there not an easier way of <laughs> just getting one big balloon? Then <laughs> the challenge is... No. There's no challenge there. No, it's yeah, got to be... It's got our people coming up and hooking balloons. It'd be like Buckaroo. And the person who puts the balloon that actually raises him 10 feet wins a prize or something. So hang on, so what we've got, we've got each person with like 500 balloons. Yeah. That's mad, can you imagine how many balloons that is? That's ludicrous. 6,000? Yeah. That's an awful lot of balloons. I don't know, you'd, what, we'd, there must be someone that, that, that could do this. Oh look, people have walked on the moon for Christ's sake, we can raise Carl Pilkington with some balloons. Yes, but they had a NASA budget, we've got XFM behind us. Yeah, but balloons, <laughs> yeah. balloons are cheap. You can get about a pack of 25 for about 150. <laughs> right, fine. <laughs> no, True. Yeah, the helium though, Carl. You can't just like attach yourself to a pack of balloons. No, but... Oh. What, you think we blow them all up? With helium. Right. Oh. 
Off you go. But then we can do something with the balloons, can't we? Like, release them afterwards. Oh, we'll release them back into the wild. <laughs> Brilliant. As a sign of peace. <laughs> Fly, my pretty fly, be free. I am so excited. I have not been so excited about and, and when I thought that Robin Ince was going to stay in my cupboard for a thousand pounds. Look, we've got to, we've got to do 6, this. Six thousand balloons. I don't think it's going to happen. That's an awful lot of balloons, and I just don't oh. think I don't see how we can tether them all to Carl. He's a small man. No, but you know about different lengths, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Carl knows. Can you think about the logistics of this? Oh, someone must know. There must be a company. There's a bloke willing to do it. I, I know he doesn't know the technology of it. He's willing to sort of stand by. And, and so the company just on, has we, access to helium like that. So we can do this. Come on, London. And someone's done Londoners. It. it was on the internet already, so someone obviously has done it. Yeah. So they didn't say, "Oh, we can't get all the balloons." No, they probably worked it out, didn't they? Must I can't. Carl, you're uh, more excited about this than anything else. About your education, about your exam right, results. You're so exciting. excited. And, and we'll have a little rope. We'll like flying a little kite, a little Carl. We're like, let's go. Fly. Carl, what will you wear? Like a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah, I mean, no, with sponsorship all over it. Oh, it'd be yeah. great. You look like Jackie Stewart, and just as you go up your little face, oh my god, I'm not gonna sleep until this is done. This is the most exciting thing ever. Only ten feet. Ten feet, yeah. And we need tethier. some. We need some kind of rope to sort of tether you to the ground. Yeah. We don't want you sort of flying <laughs> off. This is gonna be great. And you'd have a little crash helmet and everything, and little Dee boppers on the crash helmet, like yeah. it's a little flying ant. Definitely, definitely. We give him a little. Oh my god, can we give you an outfit like little wings and everything? Can oh. we paint your face with like children's no, paint? I'm not yeah. Doing all that. Why? Oh, because no, that'll be silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please, Carl, do this. Do it. We do it for charity. We do it for charity. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is. We we'll do it for brilliant. children in need. Please, just phone in if you've got if you can help us lift Carl up thirty feet. Let's say thirty. I think feet. it has to be a decent. Yeah, yeah, it has to be a decent. What well, is there a world record? Because we want to break that. If we're yeah, we want to break it. that. What is the world record for raising a man by balloons? Yeah. Okay, oh. so listen, let's just, let's just finalise oh. details here. We've got, uh, I'm so excited. Email address, ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. Yeah. Ricky.gervais yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number? UK. What's the number? The number, Carl? 0870 800 Lift it again. Carl. Lift Carl. 0870 800 uh, Sponsored by Heat Magazine and you, Maybe else. even if you've just got an idea about how we might be able to organise it, how we'll be able to get it done, if you've got contacts, anything, just get in touch, give us some information. Oh, oh, that'd be great. I'm gonna play a Beatles track for song for for the lovers. Oh yeah. man. It's, uh, it's off the Help album and it's um, you've got to hide your love away. Oh, just think of his little face as he goes out. Oh. Could you tell me about this? Yeah. Well, XFM, we're near the end of the show. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. We've enjoyed your company. Carl, we're going to try and get Carl in the air. Anyone that can help us, take him up with helium balloons. Um, our friend Johnny Mango called again. And uh, apparently the record's 11,000 feet. Carl is getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, the, the world record is 11,631 feet raised by hot air balloons. How, yeah. how tall is uh, Canary Wharf? It's 11,631 feet. Exactly. What's I don't know, Carl. Is it how much higher? It's a long way. A lot, a, a more. Yeah, I'm Because I'm like six foot something. Yeah, think of that. Just look at Steve. All right. Yeah. But you can change your record. You could say, well, the sort of balloons are the one with, with Mickey Mouse on it or something. Yeah, can I just can I just say something? That man did 11,000 feet, but he wasn't naked. <laughs> All right? Come on, Carl. You'll be the- your 30 feet will be the world record for naked ballooning. Yeah? Mm. Think about it. All right, it's for charity. Well, thank you for listening, everyone. We are going to raise Carl. We are going to raise Carl. And after after Carl said, and just to think, my teacher said I'd never be a high flyer. So this is your chance, Carl, to shine, to fly. Steve. It'll be brilliant. Uh, this is a final song for the ladies. Spell and Sebastian, we've not heard uh, them for a oh. while. This is from, uh, it's actually a B-side or a triple side or whatever you call it. Um, track three on a single called Jonathan David. This is the beautiful The Loneliness of the Middle Distance Runner. Play Goodbye. <laughs>